Hello, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to Filbert Flies. Welcome to this inaugural flight in the A310-300, the Inibuilds A310 uh, for MSFS. This is a plane I have never flown before in my life, um, which is uh, which is which is going to make it interesting. But I have some help uh, coming very shortly. But before we introduce the help, um, can we have some Fs in chat for Scott, please? I'm ever so sorry. That is uh, horrible. Are you in pain? Are you in pain or is it just, is it all numb and yuck? Oh, I'm going to get rid of Bene Overlay, I think. We don't need that. We don't need that. No. Good. We'll just admire the plane like so. And I'm also going to try and shrink my window because you're only seeing the middle bit of it because in this particular scene, uh, I have not changed the dimensions to account for my 1440p monitor. That's a bit too small. But we'll get there. There we go. There we go. That's what I'm seeing now. It is happening, Matt. Hello. Welcome, HK. Welcome, Alex. Welcome, Liam. Welcome. Your overlay thing is looking rough. YouTube overlay. Do you mean the top bit? Yeah, I'm just going to just got rid of it. Just got rid of it. Just got rid of it. Uh, because I haven't had time to set it up, to be honest with you. Uh, Aviation Roly, uh, F's in chat for you as well. I'm ever so sorry about all the issues you're having and your sim crash. Simon, good afternoon. Vetterplane, good afternoon. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, and Melon, hello to you. Uh, I think that's everyone who has said hello thus far. It's lovely to have you all with me. Um, it's been a long time since I've streamed on YouTube. And uh, yeah, it's going to be quite nice. It's going to be quite nice. Not least, not least because I did not have to do my hair and make myself look beautiful for all of you. As we know, what did I say? What was the old adage? I think I said I'd get a face cam on YouTube when I hit a million subscribers or got a million pounds in donations. Neither of those things have happened. Hence, face is my business and mine alone today. Um, V1, good morning to you. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I was about to start watching a 30-minute tutorial on the A310. Why bother, boss, when this stream is starting with the Brain's Trust? Indeed. Indeed. M degree, hello. Now I'm playing Truck Sim instead. That is a good idea, I think. When flight sim drives you mad, simulate something simpler. Uh, I cannot see cats. I know, I know. There's a lot of Twitch people here who are very, very angry. Very angry that I'm not streaming on Twitch. And that's understandable. That is understandable. Um, but if you'd like to see my face and uh, additional, lots of additional streams, I do almost all of my streams on uh, Twitch these days, then do go and follow me. Um... Why are you angry, M degree? Why one million pounds in donor? Yes, yay! <laughs> Rip your wallet, indeed. Yeah, no, that's what I. Uh, that's what I always said when I uniquely streamed on YouTube, and then yeah, started. Ah, uh, uh, you know, going over to the dark side as well. Cron One KTV, thank you very much indeed for the follow. Oh, we have the old alerts back. Why is this? Ah, oh, never mind. It's like the old days. Quite nice. Bit of nostalgia. Bit of nostalgia. These are the old stream elements alerts. I don't know what they're doing in, uh, in, in uh, sorry, the old stream labs alerts. I don't know what they're doing in OBS Studio. But anyway, Morris and Mildred on Twitch say Twitch is better. If, yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. I, I agree. I generally, I generally prefer Twitch. But anyway, I can't just abandon YouTube because there are fifteen thousand six hundred subscribers or something like that here. You know, I can't just say, oh, bye. I'm never streaming here again. I'd feel awful. I wouldn't be able to sleep at night. Uh, anyway. Uh, we are joined today, we're not on VATSIM, but we are joined by Paul, uh, who is doing the same flight in an Emirates A310, and we are on Join FS together. Uh, I decided that I should practice what I preach about VATSIM and not clog up the network without knowing what I'm doing. So yeah, so not a, not a VATSIM flight, but still a little bit of, uh, a little bit of company for us nonetheless. Okie dokie. So, um, Sam... Uh, who you may know as uh, Pete Conrad, has very, very kindly agreed to come and help me out this morning because, you know, it's very rare that I do a stream without ever having touched a plane before. And Sam has flown uh, in X-Plane quite a lot. Uh, has flown the A310 in X-Plane quite a lot. So I think of, of all the people who are uh, in Club Phil, but he is probably the most qualified or one of the most qualified. Could, there, there are many others who just weren't around at the time. Uh, special mention, of course, to Wojtek uh, and to Ben. Who, uh, who who has to build a bed instead, unfortunately. Um, what's it, Wojtek, what did Wojtek say? Wouldn't bother boss, I don't think he can see them. What's that? 
literally didn't see anything from Wojtek here. What's going on? Anyway, my point is Sam's joining us and I'm very grateful to him. So I'm going to unmute us both now and we'll say hello to Sam. And uh, then we can start setting up and see, see how I do. Hello, Sam. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> hello. Thank you again for agreeing to do this. It's very much appreciated. Um, so, yeah, so Sam, Sam's been in Club Filbert for a very, very long time. Club Filbert gold member. And, and one of the privileges of being a gold member is that you get to do this sort of thing, which I'm sure is, is, uh, is something you've dreamt about for quite a long time, right? Oh yeah, I, I don't have any form of stage fright whatsoever. At the moment, <laughs> whatsoever, this is this is what my club Filbert Gold membership has been building up to. <laughs> Fairly sure it was a case of all of the other backup bends taking one step backwards, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, really? it was a case of of you being the uh, the, the, the the best man for the job, sir. Uh, the people boss, many subs. Oh my God, are there subs? I can't see them. I can't see them. Oh God. Hang on, hang on. Let me have a look. <gasps> 18 months. This is a milestone chat message. 18 months. Wojtek, thank you. Kaffel, 23 months. Thank you. I don't know why I'm not getting any alerts. Oh, yeah, I do, because I never get alerts. I really need to sort these out if I'm going to stream on YouTube. My apologies. Scott, Club Filbert Silver uh, for 19 months. Melon, 18 months. Club Filbert Gold. Uh, Kaffel, I know I've already said you. Uh, Trolls, 12 months for a year. Yeah. Uh, and and M Degree Club Filbert Gold for two months. I swear it was only like two days ago you signed up. But anyway, thank you very much indeed, all of you. Uh, I love you very much indeed. Ben is a born legend and Moradin as well. Zilla is God. God, oh, strong words, strong strong words from HK. See, <laughs> I can't disagree. I can't disagree with them. Um, what else is going on? Two months, 12 months for Twelves, 19 months for Scott, 18 months for Paul, 23 months for Gaffer, 9 months for Wojtek. I'm amazed Wojtek hasn't been a member any longer than that. Um, but anyway, yeah, there we are. Feels like he's been around forever, doesn't it? Uh, let's see how much of a pro you are at this, boss. Riley, not in the least, and nor would I claim to be. But Sam is. Sam's going to get us through this. Bill, I thought you said the camera wasn't on. It's not Matt! Exclamation mark, Matt. Three. Let's do some plain stuff. <laughs> so um, we can see you down the bottom left, but you're facing the wrong way. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, my logo. Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah, so uh, I do have some documents to help as well as, as well as Sam. So I think what I'll do is I'll see how far I can get. <gasps> Riley! With a sub! Riley with a sub, thank you very much indeed, boss. That is not a sub, a membership. Remember your platform. That's very kind of you. I appreciate it. Thanks. Um, Dan, my aunt just casually sent me a picture that she's flying on a 747-400 today in business class. What? She's a lucky woman. She's a lucky woman. Is that Lufthansa? They brought some out of retirement, didn't they? I think. I think. Uh, anyway, yes. Right. So, Sam. Hello. Uh, first thing that uh, Harry's Pog Flows list says is igniters check off. Correct. Where igniters? So the igniters are at the very bottom of the overhead panel. Right. Uh, under the engine start panel. You just ah, want to ensure that that to. is ignition off. Ignition off. Roger. Thank you. Uh, wipers are off. I can see them with my own eyes. Throttles. Check. Throttle levers idle and reverses stowed. They are idle. Reversers are stowed. Landing gear, lever down. Uh, batteries off. Batteries off, right? Okay. Well, this is very, this is very thorough and in-depth, isn't it? Um, okay, fine. DC bus selector, test. Uh, where is DC bus selector? DC bus selector should be on the overhead panel near the top. Oh, wrong button. You should have uh, an electrical indication panel up there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Battery. Ah, there's three. There's two. There's one. And they should be above 25 volts. And they are. Okay, cool. External power should be connected. I think it is. Uh, APU fire test. Press and hold APU fire loop test. Um... 
So you may want to drop your, your camera view, take it down a bit so you can see underneath the APU fire handle, handle which is where the, the, actual, um, the actual test button is. Okay, and where's the APU fire handle? It's the center of those three red oh, handles yes. on the I panel. I see it. Yeah, okay, okay. So I want to come yeah. that way. Loop test. It's just that button that's in the middle, immediately below the handle. Okay, thank you. Press and hold. One thing that we have missed, however, from the flows that is very important when we want things mm -hmm. to start making beeping noises is none of the batteries are on. Ah, yes, batteries Let's on. turn the plane on before we go any further. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now we do this. Nice, nice. Bells and lights, sounds good. Uh, 12 months on Twitch. Wow, it's a long time, right? isn't it? Long time. Oh yeah, maybe KLM. Johan Trains and Planes, hello, welcome to the channel. How are you? Welcome to the channel. You've been before, you know what I mean. Uh, Lufthansa, Frankfurt to Bangalore, I think. She's working for a very well-known electronics and automotive supplier company, and apparently they treat their employees very well. Yeah, Sam's like it. Yeah, Sam is a pro at this. He was the right man for the job. This might take longer than Zilla. I don't know, Zilla did take three hours. If it takes longer than that, uh, I'm going to have to, we'll, we'll split this stream into starting the plane today and then flying the plane. <laughs> another day because I do have to go out but no I don't think it'll take that long he was keen to show off all the bells and whistles I don't know where the bells and whistles are really so no uh, APU start if no external power but we do have external power yeah let's turn the external turn power on. on so uh, on the left kind got of it. left of the middle of the panel left of the fuel yeah got it thank you thank you um, probe heat verify off Oh, I saw it, I saw it, and then I moved with you. Oh, no, that one. So the probe heaters are again just on the right-hand side of the uh, of the fuel panel. Just to the right, you've got a load of orange lights. Ah, yes. So they should be off. Yes, for now. For now. And window heat also, which is just below. Okay. Annunciator test. Is that, I assume, on the main panel somewhere? I'd imagine so. This is one switch I myself have not located. Oh, okay. Um, enunciators. I don't know. You know what's going to happen if we if we am an R too long over this. Voitech's going to come in and say. Uh... I mean, there's a reason <laughs> we we both dragged him into this. <laughs> Uh, well, it doesn't sound particularly important. I mean, I presume they're working. Essentially, if we push that button, it's going to uh, light up like a Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll, we'll come, we'll do that. I'll learn where that is another day. Bleed air. APU bleed on if APU on. It's not. Packs on yeah, if so APU Yeah, so the APU on. bleed can stay off for now. Yeah, okay. Uh, break and overhead flows. So, break test. We need to uh, verify the chocks are in, which I guess we do on the EFB, right? Maybe. The EFB, I believe, does not have a chocks setting uh, in there, although someone could correct me if I'm wrong on that one. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't remember where that switch was either. Okay, right. Oh, it's a three-way switch on the glare shield. Thank you, Liam. It's on, on the... the I found it. It's on the very bottom right of the overhead panel, below the APU bleed switch. Very bottom. And it's a three -way ah, yes, blocker. there we are. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, look at that. Yes, I have no concerns about the enunciators not working, which is good. And then we'll turn them bright or did bright, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Hello, Mark. How are you? A thousand apologies for being late. Don't you worry. <laughs> Don't you worry, boss. Uh, Riley, you're doing a two leg trip to Dublin with Air Transit that they used to do. Toronto, Montreal, Dublin. Oh, nice. Very nice. Um, you haven't even updated yet. No, I mean, this is literally my first time in the plane. Have you flown it yet, Scott? Right. So, where were we? Brake test. Chocks. Sorry, chocks we don't know about, right? Yeah, and to be honest, 
if, if this is something you want to go through, we, we can try it, but it's uh, it's certainly not something in a simulator that I'd be too worried about. No, okay. And uh, on your uh, your commitment to the level of immersion. I am pretty... Yeah. I know that I've, I've said that and somewhere Harry is just vibrating angrily in the corner. Yeah, but, uh, he's written it in. He's written it in. But then he is in bed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's, let's skip... Uh, yeah, let's skip this. I can go through this in my own time when I'm not trying to entertain the people on stream. And Harry, if you watch this back, I promise you I'll do that boss on the next stream. I will do it then. Uh, so IRS alignment then. So the IRS switches are right at the top of the overhead panel, like right at the top. And there's three of them. There's one on the extreme left of the overhead panel, one in the center of the top of the overhead yeah. panel, and one on the far right. I see them. Just going to put all three of them over to nav. Okay, verify battery upper mode. Battery upper light. Verify align mode light. I missed the battery upper light, but I saw something. Yeah. Check ECAM to confirm aligning. Correct. So on the ECAM, we should see IRS in a line. Uh, I don't. Okay. That may be something that happens. I think we also, uh, before we get IRS in a line on that uh, screen, we need to have entered our uh, destination, our, our from and destination airports as well. Okay, fine. fine. Uh, MCDU in knit page. Uh, I should be able to import this, right? You can, yes. What you want to do, I don't know if you've already configured your, if you want to do a sim brief import or whether you want to do it manually, I don't know. You know how you want to do it um i think i <laughs> sorry i'm just reading chat <laughs> uh, no chocks for msfs a310 okay right so we couldn't have done that anyway i was dog walking had to grab my strawberry milkshake ipa oh that sounds grim boss that sounds grim the instructor is uh, is sam sam uh, pete conrad sam who is a real world x plane a310 pilot uh, nice once in chat if you're sufficiently entertained wow what's an endorsement alex thank you boss i appreciate that uh Voitex says mcdu first yes so this is where how do you want to do this do you want to do a sim brief import in which yes. case you want to click on menu menu on the MCDU. ah and then i put my sim brief username in which i think yes. i changed from mr philbert to philbert flies i think uh but i can't honestly uh remember let me just go to my out. No, yeah, I did. It's Philbert Flights. Okay. Philbert Flights. Okay. And then once that's done, you should be able to click on Request Sim Brief in the top right. Okay. Complete that link uh, done. Yep. And that should have automatically then take, taken you back to the init page. It has. What we want to do, right hand side, uh, the right hand LSK fourth down, uh, align IRS, just click okay. on that. Okay, IRS in align. Yep, so our IRSs are now aligning, and then obviously, depending on what realism setting you've got in the EFB, you can set it to take the requisite, you know, ultra immersive six years, you know, yes. fast or instant. I think I have got it set to take the ultra immersive six years, sadly, but then it's going to take a while anyway. Spectacular flying, hello, welcome. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Free enhancement pack is great. It is, it is, it is. Sam the certified CFI. There we are, you see? They love you. They love you, darling. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do I support football? I don't Ivan, I'm afraid. No, football's never really interested me. Um, okay, so next, um, we it's Harry said we do the smoking and seatbelts thing. Correct. So those switches are overhead panel, very bottom left. Bottom left. Ah, yes, seatbelts. On. No smoking. On. Uh, hydraulic pumps. Verify low pressure lights. On. Yep, so immediately above where we turned on the passenger signs, you've got three hydraulic pressure gauges, and we're just ensuring yes. that the pumps there all show LOPR for the, the four buttons. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, verify fault lights on the spoiler, speed brake, pitch feel, and rudder feel. 
Yep, so keep going up above the hydraulic power panel. We've then got the spoiler and speed brake uh, controls and the pitch field controls, and we should have uh, fault lights. Oh, there. yes, yes. Uh, we do not, however, have fault lights on pitch field one or rudder travel. Nope. I don't. I don't have it on pitch field one either. So. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, strobe light now can go to auto. To here. Uh, nav light system one or two. Let's go for system one. This is this is this is reassuring the external lights panel, isn't it? That's very A three twenty. It is. Uh, anti ice should be off. That's here. I can see it. ATS switches should be on. What the hell is an ATS switch? So above where we've just turned on the strobe light, you've got your anti-ice switches, and then above that, you've got six rocker switches. The ATS switches are the two lower rocker switches. Oh, yes. Do you know what they do? Um, I believe the ATS is the auto throttle system, but I may be wrong on that one. OK, that sounds that sounds plausible. That sounds plausible. Uh, what, you weren't able to find some Iranian pilot who's currently on the type in order to help you out? Or is that reserved for a full tutorial? Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't. You didn't want to do a stream boss, but yeah. <laughs> that would be quite cool, actually. Sam, real world X plane A310 pilot epic title, I know. <laughs> uh, my Faith Milano radar controller is online. Oh, good. Oh, good. Um, yeah, I wish I was on that sim in a way. In a way. Do another one. Better than that. Right, your damper switches. Yep, so above where we turned on the ATSs, they are oh, the yeah. right hand pair of rockers. Bottom, thank you. Uh, pitch trim switch is on if IRS align. Correct. So if you're still in IRS in a line, we need to ignore those for now because if you try and turn them on while the IRSs are not aligned, they'll turn themselves off again. Okay. We'll and Harry there. has very kindly further down the flow put in red text, remember to turn the pitch trims on when the IRS alignment <laughs> is done. Very <laughs> Okay, handy. good, good, good. Uh, Galley power. Yep, so that's above the yaw damper switches. Above the yaw damper switches. Yep, yeah, there it is. On uh, electrical power panel, verify no white lights. That's Should this one here. Have. Yeah, so where the, the galley power button is at the very bottom of the electrical power panel. So hmm. the, uh, where the battery switches are, etc. that's all the electrical power okay. panel. Okay, yeah, I have no white lights. Marvellous. Um, electrical switch set to emergency and essential. So go up to where we tested the battery voltages. Yeah. Just to ensure that both of those um, rotator knobs are basically in the 12 o'clock position. So the left-hand side is in yeah. MER and the right is in ESS. Yeah, OK. Uh, engine fire test performed. Verify engine one fire handle latch is secure. I don't know how to do that. That sounds like I'm going to uh, fire the squibs if I try that, right? Yes. I would. <laughs> uh, for these, uh, the, for in MSFS, I would do the uh, the loop tests. So again, with the APU, same as with the APU handle, it's the, the small switch immediately below. Okay. Oh no, it's the little button in the middle, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, good. Oh, the alarm stopped sounding on number two, but I think yeah, I think that's fine. Good. Uh squib squib test? Engine one squib test. Now, Mr. Voitek, if you can jump in here, I'm not sure where the squib test buttons are in this aeroplane. Uh, Three ten looks sweet. It does. It does. I'm very very excited to get in here. Nearly every aircraft going across the pond at the moment is an A three ten. Can't beat them. Join them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I I will definitely be doing quite a lot of pond crossing in this thing. I just thought for the very first one. Due to time constraints, I've got a short flight. You've got to say hi to everyone else too. I saw that, Mark. As long as you said hello to me, that's all that matters. Ah, uh, it's um, thank you, Simon. Um, it is. Thanks. If you look at the handle, so the, yeah. the engine one fire handle, there's another small button that's I just see, to yeah. the left of the handle. So try uh, punch that for engine one and engine two. Yeah, it says squib. Yeah, I assume that's what all it's supposed to do. Uh, ignition, ignition off. We checked that earlier, didn't we? We did. Yeah, that's these, yeah, ignition off. Uh, fuel indicators, verify expected amounts showing. Well, 
I don't know what amounts I'm expecting, and we haven't loaded any fuel or payload. Is that something this is probably a good time to go into the FB and get the aeroplane actually fueled and loaded and ready, yeah. uh, ready from a weight and balance perspective. Okay, that's that weight thing here. Right, so we can have a look at the flight plan. And... Ooh, yeah, so we actually have to do... We can't just do a zero fuel weight down here, can we? We actually have to do passengers, cargo and fuel. Which I'm not used to. Just have to regenerate my flight for some reason. And then we'll do that. Right, so passengers, we're taking 156. Uh, cargo, we're taking 3.9 tons. And fuel, we're taking 10,180. That is insane. That is insane, isn't it? Well, that's about what I'd expect if we're factoring in things like alternate fuel and hold fuel and what have you. Yeah, but I mean, compared with the, you know, the things we usually fly, it's high. It's very high. Oh, yeah. The A310, of course, is an aircraft that was designed realistically late 70s, early 80s, when engines mm. were nowhere near as efficient as anything that's flying around now. Yeah, yeah. So that has, pleasingly, given us a zero fuel weight very close to what Simbrief said we should have. Simbrief says 96380. This has given us 96546, which is good. Yeah. I'm assuming, did you go and get the um, the Simbrief profile that I and I provided on there? Yes, Discord? I did. Yeah. If anyone who's watching hasn't, go and do that. It's very, very accurate. Yeah. And then I just click apply, do I? Yes. Plan apply to aircraft. Awesome. So if we go to live, that should match. Yeah, it does. Brilliant. So now I can check that uh, the expected amounts are showing. Yeah, so if you're looking at the fuel quantity gauges, which are immediately below the fuel pump panel, yeah, roughly it's got a readout for each actual tank. That should all, you know, just using basic maths, looking at that, that should all uh, that should all make sense to you. Yeah, so three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so about eleven tons of fuel. Yes, ten thousand nine hundred. Good. That does make sense to me. Um, fuel pumps off and less APU running, fuel pump in a pump, L tank 2 on, so they are off mm. and the APU isn't running. Uh, it's a fuel guzzler, it is, it is. I'm taking like a full load of passengers and 23,000 pounds, wow. <laughs> you are a heavy boy. The uh, other thing you can do to verify that you've got the right amount of fuel on board is if you yeah. go down below the throttle quadrant to the centre pedestal. Yeah. The aircraft has got a lot of the synoptic pages that you'll be familiar with from the A320. Oh, One yes. of them is the fuel panel, and yeah. it'll show you in the center of the um, the display on the right-hand side of the... Um, yeah. A, yeah, you should have a, a total fuel value. Yeah, good. Got it. Thank you. Um, where, it, where is what, Charles? Where am I? We're at, uh, we're at Zurich. We're going to Rome. No, that's probably not what you meant. Where is what? I wonder if this plane will get free. If he's out. talking about the INI Simbrief profile, trot, oh. it's on INI's Discord uh, under their A310 FAQ section, I believe. You should be a streamer, boss, to understand what people are saying. <laughs> I never do. I have, this, I have this really incredible ability called being able to read. It's, uh, it's I can read. It's an equal measure. I can read. I just can't associate it with something I said or that was said less than 10 seconds ago. That's my problem. <laughs> Um, fuel pumps off. Yeah, we've done that. Fuel isolation valves. Verify on with inline green. So that just means all of these should be green, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And they've got a vertical bathroom, which they do. Yeah, they do. Uh, good. Uh, Valentino. Hello, you're already subbed to my channel. Nice, thank you very much. I'm also already have flight experience at 737777. Ooh, very good, very good. Um, I wonder if this plane will get frequent updates like the standalone ones you'd buy from outside of the marketplace. I think it will. 
the way Ben was talking on his stream last night, it did sound very much like they'd already fixed a couple of little bugs. I guess the issue might be how quickly they can be updated into the sim. I don't know. Sharky, hello, welcome. Nice to see you. Um, backup landing gear lights. Check working. I'm guessing these are up here somewhere. Yes, there they are. They are working. Three green arrow lights. Yes. Verifying down look lights. Yes. Uh, cockpit voice recorder. Test. Press and hold. Green test button. Oh, that's familiar as well. Yes, I get a reading on the gauge. Pressurization panel. Verify working. Change between system one and system two. Where is pressurization panel? So pressurization panel is if we go down towards the bottom right where all of the uh, the air bleeds are. Oh yes. That's air the uh, pressurization panel there. Okay, thank you. How do I change from system one to system two? Uh, so Can't see that, can you? No. Again, this is it's, it's this aircraft is an Airbus, and thus, unless something goes seriously wrong, the uh, pressurization is all kind of set up for you by default. That is something that comes over from you know the A320. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Ten minutes to break the pressurization. You have to do it deliberately. Right. Okay. okay. Right. Ten minutes till arrival one. Hopefully, it'll be better than the stinkers I had in the one five two today. Oh, was it a bad day? Yeah, I've had several of those lately as well. Aha, uh -huh, found it. Uh, if oh, you yeah. go to the kind of like the bottom of the overhead panel, yes. to the right of the wiper switches. Yes. Ah, oh, yes, got, system one. Yeah, so just press system two. Okay. Verify auto pressure rate knob in normal position. Yes, it is. It's just it above. Is. Yep. Verify man press off. Yes, I assume so. It's dark. Yep. Verify both valves open. They're saying open, yes. Yep. Okay. Probe and window heat off unless in cold weather. Harry, this is insufficient. How cold? How cold? It's eight degrees. I see my gut feeling is we should put the window heats on at eight degrees. What would you do? In my, when I'm doing abridged flows, when I'm just flying this aeroplane on VATSIM, I follow the traditional Airbus logic of, of pretty much as soon as I'm ready to push back, I just check the overhead panel. Anything that's got a white light on it, I push. Okay. Um, I mean, the window heats could probably go on now, to be honest. I mean, eight degrees is not, you know, freezing, but no. it's, it's cold enough. We want, our, we, want our, we want our windows, you know, nice and warm. Yes. Uh, Mark, I saw a documentary on the proposed 1960s BAC 311, which would have been the most advanced airliner, but as usual, the UK government would not back it, despite BA, BA wanting it along with other airlines. Oh, that's a shame. It's the British snare. government screwing up an aviation programme? That has never happened. <laughs> uh, thanks for posting the profile, Tiles. Appreciate that. Uh, PMs at the time were trying to grease the wheels to ease us into the EU, so we gave the fledgling Airbus company a lot of stuff and they screwed us over. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, and in the process, I found a fix for my throttles being slightly messed up. Ah, yes, I managed, I struggled too to calibrate my um, Honeycomb Bravo. And what I found you had to do, this might be of use for some people watching, so I'll just tell you. The issue I had um, under the settings, I had already turned off reverse on throttle axis. I'd set that to no. And I was only able to use half, like the upper half of the range of my throttles. Um, what I did was I turned the reverse on throttle axis to yes. I'm not going to do this because I don't want to mess anything up. Uh, then I moved my throttle levers up to the halfway position just until the reverses went down. Then I clicked on no again, and then I had a full range of movement. So I don't know what that's about, some little bug, but uh, easily solved. And someone else tried that, uh, Matt tried that, and it also worked for him, so that's good. Um, wasn't a bad day. I don't know how I greased the no flaps and glide approaches, but can't on a normal one. I'm exactly the same. No flapless approaches I'm good at. Glide approaches I used to be good at, but as we found out last lesson, not doing them for six months means I'm not anymore. 
But I find it much easier to grease a no flaps approach than a normal one. Don't know why. Uh, I've got that video on my to watch list. Oh, I'll give it a go as well. I'll give it a go as well. Beluga PC, welcome. How are you? Airbus are dead to me now. <laughs> uh, Mark, you're not going to enjoy this stream, boss. <laughs> uh, if you aren't aware of him already, I highly recommend Mustard. He does great videos about defunct planes and projects. Okay. Remind me, boss. Remind me. Uh, Airbus, so many stuff to fix. Uh, never flying any Airbus, but there's so many problems on it. I think that their reputation is rather better than Boeing's at the moment. Uh, and the 311 would have used the RB211 engines when they were flying anyway. Right, right, okay. Um, right, oxygen, check low pressure supply on, verify LP gauge in green. Is yep. that also up near So that on? is where we turned the window heaters on. If you go further up the panel, uh, it will be, the, you'll see the low PR supply switch. It's got a white light on it. Oh, yes, okay, okay. Uh, so I'll press it. There you go. LP gauge is in green. HP gauge above 1400. It's got a stupid scale, so it's hard to tell. It might be. <laughs> Would you say that's right? That's above 1400? It's, it's in the green band, which is good enough for government work. Okay, fine. fine. Um, engine fire test. We just done that. We have. Um, depending on how you're doing the flows, sometimes you do the engine fire tests at the same time. Other times, as you're, you, you'd be moving through the panel progressively, and right. you just do it as you were going down that particular, like, shall we say, column. Yes. If you look at the overhead uh, panel, you can see it's kind of divided effectively into five yes, columns. Yeah, we're sort of going after this column. At the moment, aren't we? Okay, well, we won't do that again. Equipment cooling. Verify an overboard. Overboard valve. So equipment cooling, again, if we continue up from where we did the low pressure supply button, yes. the equipment cooling is under the vent section, mm -hmm. top right. Got it. So that should be an auto. Mm -hmm. Which obviously it's an Airbus, if there's no light it's an auto. Yeah, and overrides, I can't actually see, I assume perhaps it's the extracting blower, perhaps, I don't know. But uh, no white light is good. Uh, Cockpit door open to greet passengers as well. <laughs> All right, we can do that. There we are. Uh, should we do some boarding now, actually? Get that out of the way and see if GSX works. Okay. Boarding requested. Boarding requested. Um, what's the it's best? GSX, so I'm going to watch this with one eye closed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what's the best payware MSFS airport right now? Oh, gosh. There's too many. There's too many to be sure. I really, really, really like um, uh, Auckland. Auckland I'm a big fan of. Um, all of uh, Pyrig Designs airports are amazing. My favourite is still Edinburgh, even though it's the oldest, if I'm honest, and some of the others are perhaps slightly Gucci and more feature-rich. Um, what else? Sam, what's the best airport right now? I'm a big fan of Brussels. Always Brussels, yeah. Got Brussels. Brussels is awesome. So anyway, there's some to start you off. Crew? Do you want to board crew? No, because I'm on board already. Passengers boarding starting. So all I know so far is that the jetway has connected very nicely. I do have a profile for this. I'm not sure if it was essential. Baggage loaders seem to be in the right position. Oh, also, I updated GSX just before this flight, and then I thought halfway through, why are you doing this? It's working. Leave it. Um, definitely Axonis, Axonos's Perth. Don't listen to me. Perhaps I learned something new from Airbus, Airbus type aircraft soon. Need some training once again. Yeah. Social interactions forced by checklist. Nope. <laughs> Was thinking of getting to lose Blagnac. I think it's all right. I think it's quite good. Um, it's made by uh, Jetstream Designs. It's sold under the um, Flight Beam banner, but it's made by Jetstream Designs. And if I'm honest, I prefer their other airports. I prefer Orly, certainly, to uh, to Toulouse Blanc. But it's, it's a very useful airport for uh, Airbus delivery flights and that sort of thing. If I downloaded the Payway Zurich, do I need to delete the default handcraft into Zurich Fire Saver? Yes, you do. By Denmark. There is nothing by Denmark anymore. 
that career was brought to a close boss <laughs> by some jumped up YouTube twit. <laughs> Actually, he's doing aircraft now, isn't he? He's doing all right. How did you set custom views for the A310? Um, same way I do for other aircraft, uh, but with the help of a profile from uh, uh, Tom, which allowed... In fact, I don't think you need a profile. You just move around. I've done a video on how to set custom views. You search my YouTube channel for it, and then you just you just use your, your control bindings to walk... Oh my god, rip my immersion. You just use your control bindings to uh, to move around and plonk the views where you like. Right, anyway, we're getting distracted by greeting the passengers. Hello, I have to set up plane now, you carry on boarding on your own, thanks. Right, let's dealt with that. Uh, bleeds, verify bleeds and pressure, if APU on. The APU isn't on, still not on. So we don't need to worry about that yeah. yet. We probably won't need to turn the APU on until, you know, we've finished setting up the FMS and right. everyone in the back is sat down. Okay, cool. So moving on to... Oh, it still says reminder pitch trims on when IRS aligned. And the IRS is aligned, so we should turn them on yep. now, shouldn't we? That is very helpful, Harry. Thank you. Um, master warning, off. If on, assess as necessary. It's off, isn't it? Let's see that. Yeah. PFDND brightness. Would be quite useful to know where to do that, actually. So uh, immediately above the standby altimeter on the uh, the glass shield, very left oh, side, yes. you've got PFD and ND brightness knobs. Cool, thank you. Well, I'm happy with that, right? I might turn the PFD down just a, just a smidge. There we are. Uh, flight director. Good morning. So the flight director switch is to the right hand side of the PFD uh, brightness switch. Should be on by default. It is. Thank you. Are there two? Oh, there, yes, there are. They're both on. Okay. Uh, nav switch set to nav. Yep, so below the PFD switch you've got the three-way rocker for oh, the yeah. navigation mode. So that's self-explanatory. Yeah. VOR, nav and ILS, you know which one's yeah. which. Uh, EFIS set as required, so I'll probably do what I'd normally do. Just turn on constraints and airports. Oh, you can only have one. Interesting. Actually, is that the same in the 320? We'll have constraints anyway, that'll do me. Uh, decision height, set decision height. Verify set to minus five for departure. Why is that? Any idea why that is, sir? I have no idea why it is set to minus five for departure, but I know to do it. Yeah, yeah. just where you are now. FS Stream Team Zero is now only six dollars with the sale. Couldn't say no to that. Pretty big airport compared to the price. Tag. Yeah, I do like FS Stream Team Zero. I like it about the same amount as Gaia's one, which is free though. That's the thing. So I'm using that these days. They each have pros and cons. I think FS Stream Teams does look slightly more realistic overall. That last dude with the backpack looked well dodgy. <laughs> uh, arrival one. Here we go. Good luck, Riley. Hope it goes well. Don't forget the TCAS, we won't. Um, flight director on nav switch now. EFIS says required decision height set to minus five. Altitude set to first constraint. And you were saying that it won't follow constraints on the climb, right? It doesn't. Uh, the, if the aircraft's in profile mode, it ignores all constraints on the climb. It obeys them on the descent, but on the climb, it will just, uh, it'll just keep going to whatever you've set. Okay. Uh, I checked the SID that we're flying today, and I think all of the constraints outbound are at or above. So they are, but I'd not, quite like to add one anyway, just to okay. see what we how it would work. If that's all right. Yeah. So I think maybe we'll, well, we, we'll we'll set. Let's just call it eight nine thousand, shall we? And then yep. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, heading set to runway heading. We're doing a one six departure. Is that what I said? Yeah, one six. They're very, uh, very noisy knobs, aren't they? <laughs> so many jokes, so little time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thanks very much. Nice to see you. Uh, the reason I use FSD tree is that I find Gyro Zero is quite FPS intensive. Yes, it is. It is. I agree. But I have a new PC now, so I don't care. Low key flex. <laughs> Thanks, Liam. Thanks for, for clarifying. 
clarifying the sort of things that could have been said. <laughs> uh, right, where are we up to? Decision uh, altitude, okay. Ram air turbine. Should be off. Verify flush with panel if deployed. Contact maintenance. You know where that is? I believe it's up on the electrical panel somewhere. Just trying to remind myself. Nah, I can't see it. Can't see it immediately, but I don't think the rat is even... I don't know if it's modelled in this aircraft. No. What I'm going to do, I think, is put stars next to all the things I don't know, and you can find out at a later date. Oh, no, I'm not allowed to edit it. He hasn't given me edit access. Never mind. Anti-ice is off. CPT panel lighting. Captain's panel? Is that, is that what CPT is? I believe so. So is all of the backlighting good for you? Are you happy? Yeah, I love it. Love it exactly as it is. Uh, what have we got there? Captain and center instrument. If you wanted to adjust it, the panel that adjusts all those lights is below the EFB on the bottom left. Mm -hmm. Yep. Console floodlight is not... That's, that's, but main instrument panel floodlight... I Turn up. It's going to be getting dark, so we might have a little bit of floodlighting on, just in case. Um, oxygen test, perform. Verify audible noise, as opposed to uh, inaudible noise. Yep, got it, got it. Uh, altitude instrument set QNH. QNH. Do you have to twiddle it on the altimeter, or? Yeah, so if you go up to the altimeter, start with the uh, the captain's altimeter. Again, for those watching in the FB, there is an option to link the captain and the first officer's altimeters together. Oh, I might do that. I might do that. The Satira! Thank you, boss, very much indeed. Uh, I don't know. I just heard the alert. I can't see what you've done, but I will look on YouTube. You did something good with membership. 20 months of gold and your renewal worked. That's amazing. Thank you very much indeed. Your renewal alert, I mean. 20 months of gold, that is not to be sniffed at. I appreciate it very much indeed. And welcome to the stream. Um, yeah, so sorry. So how do we set the one on the main PFD, though? That, that? should that should be adjusted by the standby or uh, by the altimeter. Oh, right, okay. Oh, I'm, I'm changing the altitude rather than... Oh, we haven't actually got an altitude display, have we? So we don't know what we're setting, other than by looking at the standby. All right, well, let's set it to 1032. Why haven't we got our altitude display, by the way? Well, on the PFD. Yeah. Does that just not display altitude? I don't think it does. It gives you a mm -hmm. rough indication, I think, of how close you are to your, you know, your your set constraint to your cruising altitude. So you get vertical and horizontal uh, deviation indicators, etc. Mm. But either I've not been, being, been paying attention, or I'm so used to flying ancient planes that I prefer the tiles and don't notice yeah. the altitude readout on the PFD. Yeah. Oh well, we'll see. We'll see as we go along. I don't even know how to turn those alerts down, boss. I don't know how. <laughs> Is anyone else's main thread usage through the roof? I don't think so. Will you be doing a toga departure? I feel like everyone on YouTube is doing flex and I don't know how to set the TRP for toga. We could. We could do a toga departure, couldn't we, boss? Oh, of course. I don't think I've ever done a flex takeoff in the A310 the entire time I've had. Oh yeah, you've got you've got the right the right man for the job here if you want a toga departure. I'd <laughs> forgotten. <laughs> um Right, brake system, verifying normal mode. Brake, brake here, yes, normal. Anti skid on. Yes. That's alright. Uh engine temperature EGT within limits if turnaround. It's not a turnaround. I don't know what the limits are either. Set landing elevation for destination feel like I saw that. Yeah, that's here. Landing elevation. Uh, you don't happen to know what it is off the top of your head, do you? 
Uh, let me go take a look. So at Rome, it's roughly sea level. Um, oh, good. Between eight and ten feet. Okay. How? Uh, yes, yeah, so we go up in fifteen centimeters. Yeah, so we'll leave it at zero. Landing gear lever test performed. Press and hold test button. Verify audible alarm. Landing gear warn test. So where we've got our engine instruments in the center, if you go to the right, got it. where the prior. Yeah. Thank you. YouTube lags a pain in the bum <laughs> for this sort of thing. Um, repeat for system two. Where's system? Oh, okay. We switch that. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, overhead panel lighting adjust as necessary. I assume that's up on the overhead somewhere. Not sure. Uh, I've got the reading light knob, but I don't want to do reading. I want to do flight plan. Uh, it would be nice to have some actually for when it gets dark. Mm, it's kind of back and about. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for dealing with the inevitable YouTube spam, I appreciate it. If you go uh, down to the very bottom of the centre pedestal, all the way down to the bottom. Okay. You've got more lighting switches down there. You've got the PFD and panel uh, brightness switches and the overhead lighting switches. Or uh, yeah. dimmer knobs. Oh yes, one's in and one's out. Okay. Let's just turn them both up a little bit. Uh, by the way, I know Fly Tampa doesn't give a lot of updates on their progress and things, but the Schiphol scenery takes quite a while since they announced it a long time ago. I, I believe we... I, well, I don't know. I, I have a belief that we may not have too much longer to wait then. Uh, it's very, very taxing on the frame rates, unfortunately. I get 10 to 15 less compared with the Phoenix. Really? Blimey. Yeah, the Phoenix is pretty heavy. Are you finding it frame intensive, Sam? The Phoenix for me is... It, I have a love-hate relationship with that plane. Sometimes I get frames in it that is absolutely fine and it's a dream to fly. Other times I'm flying my, you know, Microsoft PowerPoint simulator. Um, right. And there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason. I've been taxiing around Heathrow at 60 FPS. Yeah. And I've taken the plane back there, you know, off fat sim so there's no model matching and it's been horrific. So... Mm. I, I don't really have a good answer for you. But how does the A310 compare to it? On the whole, for me, they've been comparable in terms of sometimes it can get a little bit stuttery, yeah. but it's still flyable. Mm. Okay. But I mean, I will put a big disclaimer here that I don't have, you know, you've got a brand new PC. I, yeah. I'm running on a gaming laptop that overheats, so yeah. <laughs> your yeah. mileage will definitely vary compared yeah. to mine. Okay. You paid for the whole engine, we use the whole engine indeed. You just hit the toga button, don't you? And then hit the other toga button and eat yourself into the sky. I don't know, boss, you're getting ahead of me. <laughs> no idea. I know that I know I know you pressed this one, but that's all I know. Uh You freaked me out with that alarm. <laughs> so, sorry, Shark. Sorry. Uh that's there we go, that's how you know we're back on YouTube. <laughs> oh the bots, yeah. Yeah. Uh what's on the back pedestal, Dan? It reminds me of what a joy the YouTube mod tool set is. Have I banned them? Who knows? <laughs> uh, I'm really surprised at the bad things. Yeah, I am. I know that, vo that voice from your Vatsim streams. Who is it? It's Sam! It's Sam! Pete Conrad Sam. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, the performance issue is because the ESPN isn't compiling on first load. Any is aware. I'm trying to figure out why that happened. Ah, oh, there we go. That's interesting. Thank you, Sabres. Love the Phoenix A320. Me too. Philbert has a new PC. Yes, I did hit my target. Um, thanks in no, well, in no small part to Matt, who uh, who donated the final £900 on the last day of the fundraiser. So yeah, new PC. I should update the uh, system. I have updated the system info, actually, in the uh, video description, if you'd like to have a peruse of that. And hello and welcome. Right. Um, this is taking a long time, isn't it? This is like a Ben string. Uh, well, we want to ensure it's done right the first time. We do, we do, we do. It works, but it's wrong, boss. <laughs> it works, but it's wrong. Yeah, I'll, I'll update it. I'll update it at some point. Uh, ADF and radio frequencies. We don't need any. But if yep. we did, 
if we needed them, so the radios are uh, bottom, if you go below the, uh, the throttle quadrant mm -hmm. on the bottom of the center pedestal, you've got your two VHF radios, uh, captain and co-pilots. Yes. At the top of the lower pedestal, so yeah. shuck your radio frequencies in there. And if we were using ADFs, those are below the radios. You've got your radio yes, got uh, volume switches and then your ADFs. Thank you very much. Very air bus They haven't really changed this at all, have they? Oh. Don't need to change what isn't broke. No, no. Uh, transponder, set score, verify standby. Mode one or two. This transponder standby. is immediately below the fuel cutoff switches. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Uh, ECAM brightness. The ECAM brightness, I believe, if you go below the transponder, you've got uh, left display and right display off and brightness switch. Left e display and right display off and brightness switch. Uh, or a, a oh, knob. yes, I'm looking. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, weather radar off. Oh, I've missed one. Verify engine oil quantity and all other parameters for flight. Uh, I guess we go to our uh, so the, engine page. Yeah. No, oil. Oil? 200 degrees Celsius. That can't be right, can it? No, I'd imagine we'll get... Uh, that's just happened to me. My connection's lost, so evidently uh, MSFS's servers are taking a beating. But Yeah. <laughs> Liam, yeah, but it's all right. I'm selling my old 1080 Ti system for the same amount, so it'll be fine. It'll balance out. We've also got the manual uh, oil gauges, which are at the very bottom of the the engine instruments in the center. Oh yes, yes, yes. So, so the pressure. We is... don't have an oil reading. You know, it's it's going to be ambient temperature, and then mm -hmm. the quantity minor both are over at twenty. So max. Yeah, same, same. Okay, cool. That'll be me. Um, ECAM brightness we've done. ECAM we've done. Rudder trim reset to zero. Rudder trim I saw down here. Yeah. Oh, connection lost again. And it is set to zero. Yep. And then there's below the the range kind of counter, you actually have a button that is to reset the rudder trim. So oh, yes. if you put it on accidentally, just punch that and you're good to go. It's, it's handy. It's handy. Uh, weather radar should be off. And I believe yep. we do have a weather radar model, don't we? I heard that we of did. Some sort. Ooh. So the weather radar is immediately below the rudder trim. Yes, I thought I'd just managed to push the knob down, but it's just how it looks. So it's off, successfully connected, good. Uh, emergency cancel should be guarded. So emergency cancel, if you go follow, go to the throttles, and it's just to the bottom right of uh, engine 2's throttle, immediately below the flap handle. Oh yeah, do it's we like know what that. it means? I think emergency cancel is, you know, if you need to project to take off very quickly i'm not sure no. it's 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 got a red guard on it and it's closed and it should stay that way unless something's gone seriously wrong right. you also might be worth noting at this point that the takeoff config tests which we're going to need later on is just yes right. got it thank you thank you uh you're basically ready to push uh, ready to start the apu and push back oh good nice man i mean feel free if you want to i will be a reasonable well <laughs> i think unfortunately uh, no need to fix or change if you're not broken. No. Uh, the exterior modelling on the 8020 is exquisite. It is gorgeous. We'll have a better look at that in the air. It is really, really nice. Uh, the enhancement pack is the is the section that you that you um, section the, the bit that you download from the marketplace after you install the update, which uh, which gives it higher resolution textures and also an interior which they left off of the default to make it work better on Xbox, I believe. So everyone on a PC who wants to buy the A310 should download this enhancement pack. It's free, obviously. And liveries are through the Inibuilds Manager V2. Uh, flaps and spoilers set to zero and disarmed, and they are. Good, FMS MCDU. Right, aircraft status page. Menu, FMS. Status page. Uh, database is correct. Does this just use the um, the in sim navigator? 
it does, yes. And that okay. was what the chap I was speaking to at um, FS Weekend was saying, because it's been set up to use the, uh, the Sims Core Navigation Database. Right, right. Weather radar doesn't work and you can't select weather. Ben said it did. I thought. I might be wrong. Um... Okay, so that's all fine. Uh, engine type and air rack is correct. Init A page. Uh, origin and destination, we've done. Flight number, uh, we haven't done. That is UAE 18. Uh, nav accuracy upgraded, that's good, but I don't need to see it right now. No, so you can just obviously press clear to get rid of that message. You make it sound easy, but I couldn't press clear. There we are. I'm just going to readjust my preset view. Uh, spoiler leak was getting in the way of me. Uh, UAE. I have found that it that saving saving custom views freezes the sim for about six or seven seconds in this which I haven't had before. Don't know why. Uh, right, so flight number is in flight data as required, cost index, altitude, winds. Now cost index seem to be, on sim brief at least, in a different format to what we're used to. This is where I will enlist the aid of uh, Mr. Wojtek to ask what he does here, because I've tried entering the value it gives you in Simbri for multiple formats and it doesn't work. So I've generally found a cost index of about 60 works fairly well, but there's no... Uh, Simbri doesn't give you a, an Airbus, it doesn't give you a number, it just says, you know, M80 yeah, in the cost yeah, index yeah. section. Wojtek is on a print. Oh, right. Boy, I'm just drag him in here. No, I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can come back to that. So we'll put in 60 for now. Can check on Volanta briefing. It gives you a cost index. It hasn't for me. Not with the um, not with the Unibuilds profile. As Sam says, rather than selecting a cost index, you seem to set a cruise speed. Cost index 200. Ah, oh, okay, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Wojtek. We'll, uh, we'll use cost index 100 then. Uh, right. And the winds. The winds, I guess, will use average wind component. Don't know. Don't know what they did on this. Oh my god, it's got it automatically, the average wind component. Yep, it's pulled that through somehow from Simbrief. Oh, and it's okay. used the, if you're looking at the Simbrief profile, it's used the average wind from mm. the set of information you get on the top right of the first page. Yeah. As opposed to top of climb winds, which I've never understood why you would use, but I know that uh, you do on the bones. Right, moving on then. Uh, flight plan page. Well, I guess we can go here and check it, even though we've imported it. Yeah. Yeah. We will uh, need to choose our SIDS and yes. departure runway as usual. Okay, this is all very uh, familiar, isn't it? So runway 16. And we're doing the, he says, trying to work a new net graph, Vebit for Sierra. There it is. Insert. Looks good. Um, Departure and arrival, if known. Well, I think we probably have a pretty good idea of the arrival, don't we? Uh, it was going to be a 16 left. I haven't actually chosen an approach. Uh, Simbrief gave me the Zibi 3 Bravo. Yes, a Zibi 3 Bravo. And I need to just select... Zibi 3 Bravo with the ILS, I don't know, Whiskey, X-Ray? I chose X-Ray. Um, I've X -ray. landed on this runway a couple of times, and the Alitalia MD-82 and X-Ray was always the one I picked. Okay, cool. No logic, I just picked it. Yeah, makes sense. And it's the highest letter, which is meant to mean it's the most common. Someone told me that once. I think it was Charles, who is usually a reliable source. ILS X-Ray, 1-6 left, and the Zibit... Zibil, three Bravo. It's good, this, isn't it? It's good. Enjoying it so far. I haven't even got it in the air. Zibit, three Bravo. 
transition examiner insert uh, Simbrief M80 profile has given me a cost index of 30 twice now oh really hmm okay this is a workflow and there should be a bunch of files in there what's this savers oh the WASM module never compiles sorry I'm, I'm sorry I've missed quite a lot of chat here uh, are you talking about the recompiling thing yeah, I don't know about all that. That's a bit of a mystery to me. But if they're if they're trying to figure it out on, and they're saying they're working on it on the Indiegogo's Discord, then that's, that's, that's a good thing. We also loaded instantly, one to two minutes or so. Anyone know if I need Oceanic Clearance entering Moncton Centre? No, I don't think you do. Not on entering Moncton. But on exiting Moncton, you, you would. Uh, some people appear not to be affected, others are. Mine only took about a minute to load on first startup. Mine getting about 30 FPS consistently. Yeah, mine mine started up very quickly. And uh, I haven't, well, I mean, I haven't flown the damn thing, so let's not speak too soon. But, but so far, performance seems to be fine for me. So, yeah, I don't know. Right, so we've done our flight plan page. Secondary flight plan page. We copy the active. Good. That works. Uh, the Radnav page, enter VORs for departure. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that, do we? Because it's all... Oh, we could add the Clotten. Yeah, we could add the Clotten VOR, I suppose. If everything goes horribly, horribly wrong, then that might that might come in handy. Why don't I see a Radnav button? This is just what I'm checking. I'm fairly sure I've... Even in the X-Plane version, I'm fairly sure that one didn't have a Radnav page either. It was done... To the right it's of the MCT, here, you can yeah. see your VOR and course selectors there, and that's where you tune VORs if you're going to be flying off them. And how do we activate these win windows? Do we push, oh, do we push that? No. See, that almost seems like it's it's dashed out because you can tune it somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, so you can only tune them if you've got the aeroplane in VOR mode on the rocker switch up the top. Oh, right. That's silly. In my opinion. That's bad design. Well, let's yeah, turn that. I'm, so It's kind of something I'm going to have a look at because I would like to fly into airports using VOR approaches, but certainly the only time I managed to do it was putting the aircraft in VOR first, which yeah. makes the VOR selector live for yeah. that side of you know, either the pilot's or uh, first officer's side. And then you can choose your VOR, your course, and put the aircraft into VOR track mode. Okay, okay. Pilot Stud, hello! How are you? I haven't spoken to you for ages. Welcome, welcome. Video is blurry. Is that for everyone or just for Super D65? Where can you find the cost index for the 310 at Simbri? I don't know. I don't, I haven't got it, but other people have said on their flight plans it shows it on the OFP. I haven't got it on my OFP. Uh, might need to reinstall the sim for what's this who might need to reinstall the sim for, to fix performance issues ah, there's got to be a better solution than that isn't there uh, i do believe you can tune it on one of the pages in the fms i can't remember where video isn't very good at least how that's that's how it was on the a300 hmm um oh well we can have what's mode do oh no i don't want to start messing around no, I can't. I can't find a way of doing it. But maybe in the air we'll have a chance to have a fiddle and, and find out. Uh, right. Next, uh, init B page. So I guess we just go to init and then press next page for that. Do we? Correct. Init. Okay. Right. Init B page. Enter block fuel, which we had up on the fuel synoptic page, didn't we? The easiest place, or we could get it from the FB, or we could add up uh, 11 tons. I'd just open the FB on the um, on the weight and balance page because all of the values you need to enter will be there. Okay. I suppose that's as close as you can get to having a having it straight up. With, um, Zero fuel weight, 96.5, and we do have to input all this manually, right? It won't auto. -pop. Yeah, one of the annoying thing, I suppose it was one of the things they had to do to make the aircraft compatible with Xbox, was in the X-Plane version you could send all of that information from the EFB 
uh, over to one of the pages, I think. Right, okay. Centre of gravity, 26.3. Okay, uh, alt fuel. Mm, get that off the flight plan, I guess. Uh, alt turn at 2.2 tons. I keep wanting to press this button for the dot, I don't know why. I wonder if that's what I'm used to from another FMC. Capped slash TO approach page. Captain's takeoff approach. Yes. Uh, V1 and VR. Oh, it's done. It's done uh, V2 automatically, has not it? No. So the V2 uh, in the A310, if you look at that, it says V2 FCU. So you do need to manually choose the V2 in the uh, on the glass shield. Okay, right. So this would be a good opportunity for us to do our takeoff performance calculations in the EFB. Yes. Let's do that. Uh, 28.8 tons of fuel coming with me across the Atlantic today. Wow. <laughs> so we'll have words for you later. Uh, what would you recommend I buy? Salzburg or Gothenburg? Oh, that's a tough one. They're both really good. They're both amazing. Salzburg is a more interesting approach. It's a more, it's, it's a more interesting area than Gothenburg. But I would say that the quality of the modelling and texturing of the airport is probably slightly lower than that at, at Gothenburg. But yeah, I'd go for Salzburg. There we are. Decision made. Right, where do I do where do I do this? So if you on the icon on the left that is like a plane that's rotating. Yeah. Ah yes. And then we put in our Torah, etc. Yeah. So the takeoff run available. Yeah, that's what's listed, isn't it? So it's three thousand seven hundred. Surface is dry. Runway QDM is 153. Wind. Let's just refresh the meta. Variable at 3. So I never know not what to do with variable wind. I'm just going to put 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Unless anyone has a better idea. Because you can't put 3 knots because that's going to... Oh no, the latest is 340 at 4. I'll put that in. So maybe it's three, four, zero, four. Outside air temperatures eight. Q and H is one zero three two. Weight. This is our takeoff gross weight, I presume. Do you get that from the sim brief plan, or do you get it from? I take it from my weight and balance page because that's what's accurate to what the aircraft actually weighs in the sim. So that's one hundred seven point four. So heavy. Four flaps. Ooh. Now this is where we have a bit of a decision to make. Um, mm -hmm. Usually in X Plane Eleven, um, I would always fly uh, fifteen fifteen. Okay. Uh, we're flaps relative... and slats in that order, is yes, it? Yes, correct. Yeah. So we're light today, and we've got yeah. a long runway, so we could probably do fifteen zero perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. I'm a bit conservative when it comes to takeoff flaps, so I usually uh, fifteen fifteen myself. Fifteen fifteen sounds good to me. Anti-ice will want engine only because it's below 10. Mm -hmm. Air conditioning we should be able to leave on. And then calculate? Yep. But we're not going to do a flex takeoff. Oh, we're going to do a toga. Someone else yeah, toga's just going to ignore everything and off we go. Yeah, so Special I just put, in, just put in the V-speeds then. Yep. 135, 136, 161. It's worth noting, if anyone wants to know, that if you were going to do a flex takeoff, you would enter that flex temp in the um, the engine limit panel, which is immediately to the right of the engine instruments. Ah, over here. Oh yes, I see. I see. Thank you. Thank you. To me, not anyone else. Uh, and then I put my speed to speed in here. 
Or, now I think, I think I'm right in saying this, I learned something from Ben last night. Something about 250 knots. <laughs> I don't remember what he said. You can, the, you can put 250 there, basically, and set that as your V2. Um, we're quite light, which means we're going to be going very, very quick, very, very fast as soon as we rotate. Yeah. Um, I, it, honestly, for me, it depends what mood I'm in. Usually I am going to 250 very quickly, so you can put it and put 250 in there and you'll be fine. Okay. Well, let's leave it at that for now. Um, he was also talking about green dot speed. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to ask him later. He said he might pop by later. Uh, that'll do. That'll do. Um... <laughs> Speed bug, V2 speed, verify showing on Captain TO approach page. It is, <laughs> pardon me, uh, progress page, verify optimum cruise altitude. Oh, I didn't put in my cruise altitude, did I? I that should have come over with automatically from uh, Simbrief, but you can check that if you go to the init page. Okay. Oh, yes, it has. Flight level 390. It's high, isn't it? Okay. We're very, very light. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's done. We need to do our thrust reduction acceleration altitudes. Which I'll have a quick look at black boxes site for. What time is it? Blooming egg, we've been here an hour and a quarter. It's got to be a record. Uh, 29.20 and 44.20. 29.20 being thrust reduction. And 44.20 being acceleration. While I love Airbus's flight data science, I absolutely hate their MCDU. I like the systems that Boeing, MD, Bombardier, and basically everyone else use way better. Do you know, I don't have a strong preference. I don't mind. Edinburgh is 50% off at Orbex and costs about $10 without tax. I'm thinking of buying it. Buy it, MG King. It's a lovely airport. Lovely airport. Uh, heading off, Paul. Yeah, see you there, boss. See you there. Over an hour and still on the ground. Take you after to bed now. We are. We are. <laughs> all right. All right. Everyone calm down. <laughs> this is a learning experience. Enjoy Enjoy the process. It's about the process, not the flying. It's also about the flying. <laughs> uh, right. Progress page. Verify optimum cruise altitude. Ah, we've got it. Optimum. Awesome. Good old sim brief. Uh, Pre-departure checks. Oh, we're getting there, aren't we? Thrust rating panel. Verify toga or flex entered. That was what you showed me over here, right? Yes. Yeah, so just right to the engine instruments towards the top of the center panel. You've got... Um, that's effectively your engine D-rate panel or your engine uh, EPR mode panel where you can set limits and what have you. Just to ensure right, basically okay. the toga is in green. Toga is in green. Okay, and if it wasn't, if we set a flex? We would still... click flex TO, which is down the bottom. Oh, You've yeah. Auto and flex TO, and then you choose your flex takeoff temp with the knob to the right of flex right. TO. Okay, fine. That I can do. Uh, we won't worry about the rest. I guess we press climb and cruise in the climb and cruise, do we? Yes. Okay. Don't forget that. Uh, <laughs> I'll forget almost every time, I suspect, at least initially. Uh, speed bug, push out then in, verify preset light on. Mm, what does that mean? This one, push out then in. Uh, yes. Oh yes, yeah, so out and then in and yeah, so preset on the right hand side. But then he says, so, so that we, there we set our second speed, right? So there we set 250? That's what I've done. Let me just check it. There are no constraints on the SID, are there, speed-wise? There's 210 in the turns. Should I maybe set 210? It might be an idea. You know, obviously we're not on VAT sim, but... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> flies eventually, maybe. ILS at uh, Rome for 16 right didn't work. Need to set it down manually. Oh, blimey. Uh, well, we're doing 16 left, so hopefully it will. Hopefully that one will work. Right. Q 
keep losing my players this is slowing everything down uh fcp profile on verify green light yep so profile is one of your climb modes so under the alt select knob yeah push profile okay nav on verify yep. green so that's light. under the heading nav. selector okay this is very Boeing. It's very Boeing. Mm. <laughs> uh, verify P climb and nav armed on PFD. Yes. Profile climb and nav both armed. APU on. Yes. If using external power. Uh, APU. Right, so master so, switch on. Bottom, yep. And then, then you just start. push the start button. When it's ready, the button to the left of start will appear with a veil. Right, okay. And then he says follow cold and dark flow. Yeah, so the full details of bringing the uh, the APU online are further up in the cold and dark flow where you've got the option of doing it. So we verify that we've got an on light. Oh, yes. Um, and then we verify effectively that the available light comes on on the that leftmost switch. Okay. Once that is done, um, we've got electrical power from the APU and we can turn off the external power and get rid of the cart. Just okay. ensure all of your fuel pumps are on, or at least the... Um... They're not. None of them are on. Okay. Let's turn on the inner pump left tank uh, two pumps, which is... In fact, honestly, you could just turn them all on now at this point, Okay. because we're getting ready to go. Got to go and mow the lawn. Oh, boss, come on. We fly new plane. It's much better than that. Uh, then EPR goes back to Toga for approach. In the event of a go around, you have max thrust available. Okay, thank you. ILS at uh, Fumicino for 60 million. We've so read that. I've missed a lot. Uh, pushing back for Dublin now, and you're still sitting there. I don't know if this is Ben or Phil, but stop confusing the young ones. <laughs> uh, 16, I think they're using both. 16 left certainly was active earlier. Uh, so the non-compiling thing is well, did my camera CFG work for you? I had to. I, it, I I installed it, but no, I had to set my own for some reason. I don't know why. Interestingly, I didn't have a camera's config in there to start with, so I don't honestly know what that was about. I think I love November and December simply because mandarins become. Yes, and decent satsumas. Doesn't the AP have its own fuel pump? I don't know. I don't think so. There's a there's a valve. There's a fuel cutoff valve for the APU at the top of the fuel panel. But um, certainly, according to all of these flows, you need the inner pump left tanks tank two on to engage the APU. Right. Kind of similar to how in the Boeing seven three seven you need. Isn't it one of the right hand fuel pumps needs to be on to turn the APU on? I should not convince. I haven't put flows. any fuel pumps on. But if it's on my flows, then yes, I definitely do. <laughs> right, so happy with that. APU's on. Okay, so is it showing, have we got, have we got that uh, green available light? Yes, we do. Marvellous. Right, we can turn off the external power and in the EFP we can get rid of the ground power cart. Okay. Close the doors, I guess, as well. Yep. Uh, packs should go on now. Correct. What we need to do, um, just seeing if how Harry's flows are laid out for this. Yeah. APU bleed. Yep, the APU bleed needs to go on. Where is that? Oh, it does have its own fuel pump. Look. To the right of the master switch. Nice. But I think Ben did say that you should turn the inner fuel tank to so, Um Where's the uh, APU bleeds? Spotted it. That's on. Yep. Oh, yes, we hear some nice bleed sounds. Um, packs on. And again, this is an Airbus, so the packs are on by default. Right. External power off, we've done. Fuel pumps on, we've done. Window and probe on. 
we've already got the window heat on, we've not got the probe heat on, but now we have. And now we do the before start checklist down to the line. It's done well with this. Right, cockpit prep, signs on auto, fuel quantity done, navigation checks, etc. Landing elevation, set altimeters, uh, both seconds, I guess. B, brake, anti skid, normal on, we've done windows and doors closed. Beacon, get that one. <gasps> We're gonna move soon, people. Gonna move. There we go. <laughs> Beacon on. And parking brake is on. So we can push back. Can. So the next part of our flows is the pushback flow itself. Yeah. Doors. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's more. Uh, <laughs> doors. Push door ecam button. Verify doors closed. Uh, I can't mouse drag. Paul, you had this earlier, didn't you? Oh, it's working again now. Door. Yes, doors are closed. Verify cockpit door. That is shut and the windows are shut because I haven't opened them. We lock the door? I bet there's a door lock button somewhere. Yeah, you've got a cockpit door lock uh, very top of the uh, overhead panel on the right. Oh, top of the overhead. Top of the overhead panel on the right. Yep. So... Oh yes, got it. And yeah, now we now we get the GSX going, hopefully. The problem with the A310, problem is when I type in CDU where slash two my game just crash. I don't I'm afraid, I haven't come across that. Sorry. Uh, prepare for pushback and departure. No need to send the same message twice soon, Phil, but we'll see it. Oh yeah, sorry, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, I did see it in the end. You started setting up in zero when Alexis started to stream and I've already deboarded in Rome. Yes, but you're not trying to learn and educate the masses, guys, okay? God. This is going to be, this is going to be a video after this, which will go down in the annals of flight sim YouTube content history as the one to watch, whereas you've just flown a plane once. <laughs> no, this isn't Barcelona, this is uh, Zurich. Has MK Studios Rome had any updates? I don't think so. I wasn't great in this. No, I wasn't. But it's still Rome and, and I, I feel like I felt like it. So even though it's not the best. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Better than nothing. Hashtag just saying, hashtag longest video ever. <laughs> Hashtag, shut up, boy, take. <laughs> so which way are we going? East or west facing? Uh, we're facing south now, so east, I guess. Yep, so if you're going to runway one six, I don't know where you are. Yeah, that's good. Echo. I think I've done the wrong one. Yep, so you want to push back so that your nose is facing to the west. Yeah, I've done the wrong one. If you needed, you could just taxi around the terminal and come back the other way. Yeah, it'd be nice to see a bit of zero. That was my thing. Uh, 40 minutes ago, I landed. Now I'm reaching 2-4 left at Montreal for departure to Dublin. Hurry up, land. We're going now, boss. We're going now. Right. Men that was a worrying sound. <laughs> so, uh, before start checklist on the EFB below the line, probably should have done that. Oh, I have already, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, ignition, move to either A or B. How do we choose? Um, it depends on airline SOPs. It's the one that I like is that you do system A on odd days and system B on even days. Some no, airlines will do it, so the captain, if the captain's for pilot flying, he does it, you know, system A, and then the co-pilot system B, it's... Okay. Whatever works. Engine 2 start, push. Verify blue light, yes, verify N2. 
Yes. Right. So, what? Yeah, exactly. What you're looking for in the engine instruments is just an N2 of 20%, and then okay. you can introduce fuel into the engine. Okay. Oh, this is good. This is a very sharp turn on takeoff. Yes, it is a bit. I'm slightly wor worried about it. I'm slightly worried that they would not um, use this in a heavy aircraft. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Triple Al Quadi, you need to have the INI manager. And then if you've linked your MSFS 2020 up correctly, you can download all of the default liveries from that. Thank you. Yeah, what Sam said. I like the very discriminatory one of who's flying. Sorry? What do you mean, boss? Sounds like a drill from uh, outside. Oh, I'll have a listen to the next one. Is it the A310 with that horrible whistle? I heard it coming out of the back of my 320, I thought it was a bug. Must have been the A320 next to me. Horrible whistle. There's, the APU's a bit whistly. Be there. William! Welcome, boss. Nice to see you. How are things? Now your scenery is gone. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. We have a the good engine start. We do not have two good engine starts. So we want at least 45% of M2, I believe, which we've got. And now I assume we do the same with the other one. Correct. Just let the ground crew throw my plane around the tarmac a little bit while we wait. Sounds good, though, isn't it? I love the sounds in this plane. My favourite one is when you turn the external power on for the first time from cold and dark and the cockpit comes alive. Mm. It's very, very good. Yeah. Very well, thank you. Trying to work out how to fly this thing. Me too, William. Me too. <laughs> Selecting LB, I like the slight hint. Oh, that's, oh God, it's the FO flying the slight less used B. Oh, I see what you mean. Uh, departing 1-6 curls. This seems to be what, well, it was what the heavies were using this morning. And I felt that 2-8 might be too uh, short, so. What sounds like a local issue? Riley's one. Then. Yes, another smooth MSFS update. Yes, you do. <laughs> awesome detailed startup. How did you set up the cameras? Uh, the same way you set them up in any other uh, in any, any other aircraft in MSFS. I've done a tutorial video on this. I'll find a quick link. Um, bear with. This was one I did a long, long time ago, but it's still uh, applicable. This is how. Okay. Right, so that's two good engine starts. Now ignition can, ignition can go to off. It's worth noting that if you were in a situation where there was a lot of standing water on the runway or is raining or hailing very heavily, you've yes. got the ignition selector into continuous relight. Oh, okay. Uh, on the right there. Sounds good. Thank you. APU bleed off and then APU on. I've already got my APU bleed off. Oh, there it is. Right got it. Side. APU lead off, APU master switch. Anti ice set is required. We do want engine anti ice. Where is that? Above the external lights panel, you've got engine one or two. Ah, yes. Flaps set is required. So we want 15 slash 15. Correct. And I'm sure you've already seen it, but if you haven't, the actual flap position enunciator is to the right of the standby uh, VSI. Uh, I had so Center of the center, center panel. Yeah. To the left of the engine instruments. Yes. You've got... Oh, um, yeah. So to the right of that standby VSI, you've got yeah. your flap and slap position enunciator. Got it. So if you zoom in, yeah. You can see the uh, the VFE speeds for the various flap settings as well. Oh yes, that's right there. So up to 210. Oh, that, up to 210 we can extend. Right. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Oh, good for you, HK. That'll make a big difference if you're on HD. 
Yeah, and hello, it's nice, but still needs a lot of optimization. It needs FPS a whole lot. Yeah, I mean, this is my first time flying it, so I haven't, I haven't found much. Something about compiling we've heard today uh, that needs to be fixed. Uh, once I got around the loop, before I got to Brigo, I went direct to Omido. The rest of the city is kind of pointless since we'll just fly straight out to a near 180 and the other one. Yeah, and I think that's what they've cleared you to for as well. Hello, Captain Squidwell. Uh, will this be a full guide video eventually? I think, and I'm hopeful that you'll be able to use this as a full guide. I probably won't be doing a tutorial on it, a tutorial video on it, um, and, unless someone can find me an A310 pilot to teach me. I might, we'll see, we'll see. I sort of gone a bit off doing videos, I just much prefer streaming. Uh, Anti-ice flaps, speed brake, arm. Oh. We pull it up. That's the A320, yeah, just pull it up. Thank you. Uh, rudder trim, reset, we don't need to, we haven't done anything, do we? Uh, nope, but it's, you know, it's, it's an item just to ensure that it, you know, someone's not knocked something while we've been working in the cockpit, just push the reset button. Okay, there we go. Uh, pitch trim we get from our uh, be on the way to balance pitch. 0.9 up. Oh yeah, that's easy enough. Slow, but easy enough. Very slow. Uh, push back tug, disconnect, we've done that. Taxi, clear size, check. Left is clear, right is clear. Taxi light on, parking brake off. Taxi light on. Uh, parking brake, I've just been using control dot, but there it is, if we want to do it by hand. Oh, this is a beautiful sunset, isn't it? Oh, and it's taxiing on idle power. They work. Liam. Liam. Have you just have you just joined as a Club Filbert member here as well? As well as being tier two on there. Oh no, no, it's a renewal. Renewals are working. Gosh, they didn't used to work. Anyway, thank you, boss. Four months of bronze, god knows how many months of sapphire. Much appreciated. I didn't think we'd get to this moment, but here we go. I know, I know, <laughs> what did I Scott? I didn't, that was a milestone, awesome. Well, obviously reinstalling OBS has fixed my renewal alerts, but <laughs> at the expense of, I don't know, they didn't work at all at the start of the screen. screen so, I don't know so yeah, we're gonna do a little loop around, uh, where should we go, should we do a loop? Yeah, we'll do a loop around the terminal, I guess. We'll get some pog exterior screenshots while we do it. Let's look at that sky. That's it's not the sort of sky you see every day. I mean, it sort of is in MSF. That's not the way. <laughs> oh, this is so exciting! This is, I know we're only doing a short flight in it, but it's what it represents, you know. The first step in the first long hauler in MSFS. Very, very important in my opinion. Yeah, I hear what people are saying about the uh, steering being quite sensitive. It really is. Internal lights, we've already done, Mark. I think we're in there as we want them. We've got a little bit of backlighting, a little bit of floodlighting. It suits me as it is, I think. Yeah, I think it is normal. I mean, I've got no reason to doubt it, because I know that the that there are quite a lot of aircraft in taxi on IP cars. Most notably, the IAE engine, the A320 it does, Leo. Yeah, it really pushes it. Out, you know. Yeah, it depends. Depends on the engine variant, I guess. 
But I remember in uh, in P3D with the uh, FS lamps. Um, you really had to be on the brakes almost the whole time from the moment you released the car. And we'll turn right on Echo. Are you flying as well, sir? As well yep, as doing I am um, sat in position on the runway. All right. Are you on um, join FS? You're on that, like a real man. No, 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 I couldn't get along there. <laughs> as little sense as it would make from a fleet planning standpoint, I'd love to see the A320, A310 in your region as well. <laughs> I would. I won't lie to you. I would. What routes would we use it on? Eurigio, by the way, for those of you who don't know, is a, uh, is a virtual airline which is the brainchild of Simon. Which is soon to be officially launched as the official airline of the device. Blimey, me, the rudders are even worse than the tiller. It feels kind of uh, narrow, doesn't it? Right, is there anything we should, we should be doing while we're taxiing out? Uh, flight controls check. Uh, Harry has compiled in the, um, in the flows a list of things that should be done during the taxi. Oh, yeah. Flight control check test. Displays flight control. You can page. Verify all controls. It's very, I mean, that would be done in real life while you're uh, taxi, but I find that virtually impossible. We'll give it a go, though. Can't do the rudders, but everything else seems alright. The rudders seem to be working. Free we win! Thank you very much, boss. Your resub message has gone on notice? No. It was just delayed, boss. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Appreciate it. You reach out to the USA. <laughs> Mastering worked for me, but not treed we went. 13 months. 13 months or something. So you reach at least a few for the peak summer season. This is true. This is true. See, I think there is now a big business opportunity to branch out internationally with a lot of people all that. <laughs> Very rarely used for departures this one, but it definitely was earlier today, hence we using it. Right, let's plonk the claim here. Parking brakes set. Flight directors verify on they are. Uh, PFD verify, key climb armed and nav armed, yes. Weather radar on. Weather radar. Um, center pedestal. Ah, yes, so we turn that to system one. And I guess it's weather, see what it does. Anything. Verify. Oh, you know, he says send it to Turbulence. Alright, we'll do that. Uh, or if I take off test, I'll press and hold take off confidence, which you showed me earlier, don't tell me. Uh, you did point it out, I think it's up here. <laughs> Alright, do tell me. It's below the flap selector. Below the flap selector, thank you. So press and hold. Or if I take off test normal displayed on ECAM. Takeoff test normal, good. Uh, checklist, before takeoff checklist down to the line. Never did the after start, did we? Also, how do I. How do I drag the tech checklist down? I should just be able to move the mouse up and down. Uh -huh. Left click, up and down. Uh -huh. 
weird, isn't it? That is weird, because that's how it works for me. I think it's how it works for me, Edgar, as well. Um, can you can you read it for me? I can. <laughs> so, before takeoff, flight controls checked. Checked? Briefing. Confirmed. Slats and flaps. 15-15 set. Performance F mass. Pass. <laughs> what was that? What, what mode are the engines in Toga? Oh. Are they? How do we know that? It's. Look at zoom in. And zoom into the engine instruments. Oh, on the engine instruments, right? Yeah. yeah. Where does it say Toga? To the right hand side. It was where, you know, where, we, where I showed you. Oh, that one. Yes, this yeah. is the F mass, is it? So, yep, we're in token, so that okay. should be. He is people, yes. Alright. Yep, that's right to me. Okay. Is that it? Uh, next item is. Takeoff config. Checked. Transponder. Transponder. T A R A. Set. Before takeoff, checklist above the line. Complete. Below the line, please. Below the line, cabin. Secure. Secure. <laughs> Keep fast. Set. T A R A. T A R A. <laughs> Packs. On. Ignition. Off. Anti ice. Engine anti ice on. Marvellous. Before takeoff checklist below the line complete. Thank you. Right, so now, approach is clear because there's no one else about. Wheel E cap. Wheel E cap? Oh my god. This one checking like here is now. just the temperatures. Uh, yeah. Those should be fine. That's only usually a concern if you've had it to the previously rejected takeoff. Yeah, that's fine. Um, brake fan off. Auto brake set max set after takeoff config test. Otherwise, the alarm will sound. Where's the auto brake? The auto brake is engine instruments just to the left. Oh yes, max. Thank you. Uh, ignition set to continuous relight. Oh, we should have done this, this is, before. This is what I mentioned earlier. Was you set it to continuous ignition if there is standing water on the runway or there is heavy precipitation. That's what ah. that ignition as required meant. In before takeoff checklist. Right. Why is he put it set to continuous relay? Just done it wrong. This is what happens in the wonderful world of Harry. Okay. <laughs> lights, landing lights. On. Strobe light. On. Runway turn -offs. On. Nose light. Take off. Okay, now is when I'd call for the below takeoff checklist before takeoff checklist. So I'm teaching you how to drive plane, and now he has to read for you too. He does. It's basically an all-round, uh, basically a carer, I would say at this point. <laughs> uh, search Mac Aviation. Uh, not interested in that at the moment. XPX user, but thank you. Oh, you're a spam person. We will block you. Goodbye. Uh, I mean, we could also expand into the long-haul leisure market and open up routes like New York to Punta Canyon. Oh, imagine! We could, boss. We could. Uh, Sam whispering the correct answers. Oddly, ASMR satisfying. <laughs> uh, my whole Saturday will be just me installing all the contents back to MSFS. Yeah, it takes a while. So. Okay, should we line up? Yes. Uh, there is one very important thing I need to say to you. Yes. This is something I've just had to Google because I nearly just died. Oh. Um, a part of the takeoff flow is going to tell you to activate the go levers. There is a click spot to do this. It right. is on the very left hand side of the glare shield. So above the PFD, you've got the rudder input stop button. Oh, yes. So yes. Line, line up and line up. And line up. It's the black Actually. thing, isn't it, on the far left? Yes. That yeah. is the go. That's how you activate the go. 
yeah and yeah, that plane it was in a similar position to where it is in the pmdg 737 which is one of the screws on the ah SMB. right okay the, the nose wheel steering it seems it feels very like an on-off switch it Makes is sense. it's if you've taxied the dc designs concord around it feels yes a lot like that. yes i have i have hello john welcome Join us at a good time. We have spent uh, the best part of uh, two hours setting up, and now we're at a point where we're ready to fly, which is very exciting. And I'm so glad I'm not doing a longer flight because I have to go out at six. Um, thrust levers advanced to 50. Let's read it all through, should we? Verify advanced to 50% in one verify state. Okay, do that. Pitch push forward approximately 25 to 50%. Go levers, press go levers. FMA read changes. Greater than 80 knots, release forward pressure by 100 knots. Pitch to FD at 3 degrees per second. Okay. Then positive rate, gear up, autopilot on, speed brake disarm. Once the autopilot's on, we can we can chill. So, uh, right. Word of warning before you take off, having just yeah. done this takeoff, everything happens extremely rapidly. Right. And I turned the autopilot on at the point you're supposed to, which is about 500 feet AGL. Yeah. And the plane very aggressively pitched down. Right, okay. It decided that I was one of Emperor Hirohito's chosen instead of a three ten pilot. Um, <laughs> so what I'd encourage you to do is do the left turn. It's an immediate left-hand turn as soon as you take off. Do that manually, and then when you're heading out towards the west, then put the autopilot in, you should be fine. Okay. Put the autopilot in too early, basically. It confuses your A310 with a Japanese A6M0, and yeah. bad things can happen. Um, boss, I've just noticed that my ND is showing something completely different. Completely different. It's showing me a right hand turn. Zoom in. You can't zoom that in anywhere from any further from where you are. In that case, yeah, just follow the FD, but again, I'd give it some time, just do fly it manually for a bit before you put the autopilot in. Okay. But you're right, I should have a left-hand turner. Definitely got the right SID in. Just oh, go into... I might have changed the SID, I don't know. Let's have a quick look. Hey, Vebit 4 Sierra, runway 16. That's what we want to be doing, isn't it? Uh, I did the Vebit 1 Tango. That doesn't go from this runway, though, does it? Did you go from 2A? No, oh, I went from 1 to 6. Oh, it doesn't matter. Ah, it did have an insert option. I wonder if I didn't insert it. Let's just do yeah. it again. Runway 1 6. Maybe it's more Sierra. That is showing that you've not inserted it. Insert. No, it's still having me go right. The Vebit 1 Tango is the one I did. Simply for chest left hand turn. Okay, let's do that. one tango, runway one six. Insert. Yeah, that's better. Curious, don't know what happened there. <laughs> right, let's do it. I did four Sierra again. No. Did I? That's like what I can see on your uh, ND. Looks correct. Yeah, all right. Uh, one more question. I think I know the answer, actually. We'll turn that one off. I think it's more backlight. Good. I'm ready. So, stick forward. Engine stable. Go button. Oh, well, they take a while to spool up, don't they? Hundred knots. V one. Rotate. Totally. 
positive rate of climb. Gear up. I'm following the FD, but it's doing some crazy stuff. Oh, uh, can I put the autopilot on this just right? Yeah, just see what happens. Yeah, it seems all right. Screenshot aviate, navigate, communicate. Look at that. Fit AF. And I suppose because I'm above F speed, I can reduce to flaps 15. We're light. It's very, very easy to overspeed the flaps if you're careful. Yeah. Okay. Back to the checklist. All of those. Gear up, autopilot on, speed brake, disarm. Uh, lights, nose, and runway turn off lights off as soon as gear up. Runway turn off those ones. There we are. Beautiful flaps as they are, aren't they? They are. I would say A310 does um, count as the proper, as the first proper one. Yeah. It's actually following this turn rather nicely for me. Nice. Can't remember what our acceleration altitude was, but I suspect we're reaching there. Struggles a bit for speed in the turn. Yes, but it's all good. Yes. Uh, tree do we Did you ask me if I was the new ground god earlier? Uh, no, because I was an hour quicker than Ben, who's been flying this way. Months and months and months. I will try and take his crown one of these days, but today is not the day. Well, you've, you've got my details when, um, what's that, Just Flight to do the 747 200 Classic. Yeah. Do another one, and that will be a three hour setup. Yes. <laughs> That's good. Um, flats up. 20 knots above F speed before we're trying to. Okay, didn't do that, never mind. Uh, ignition is off. EFIS is fine. Gear should be all neutral. Is this some kind of. What, what? what does it mean, neutral? If I click it down, I'm like, oh, I do. Madness. Madness. I'm flying a blooming Boeing. Sakith, hello, welcome, nice to see you. How are you? Thermonuclear clouds, yes. So we're levelling off at the... Sorry. I was just going to say, it is worth noting this applies more to when you're landing. If you forget that you need to move the gear to neutral, if you then have a binding for gear down, it yeah. doesn't actually drop the gear, it just moves the landing gear handle from the up position to the neutral position. We found this out yesterday right. Tom okay. nearly landed in Lisbon with his gear up. Okay, right. So so tell me again, what do I have to do? Do I have to move it to up and then use the lead? Because you've put it because you've remembered to put it in neutral, you should be fine. Your binding should drop the gear. However, it's for people who don't realise that you that there is a neutral position on that handle. If you right. don't okay. move the handle to neutral and then push your gear binding to drop it when you're landing, it's actually just gonna move the, the, the handle to neutral rather than it's okay. like it progresses in one step, basically. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go direct, because because this is stupid. I'm going to go direct to Omido. And I assume this works just like it. Right? Yeah. Easy. And so we put in a false constraint of 9,000 feet, which we've hit. How do we then get it to climb further? Uh, raise your altitude selector to your cruising altitude and just pull it up. Pull up, okay, easy. Just to ensure that it's in P climb mode in the FMA profile climb. It is. Because, and that's because we've got profile selected, so that will also stay in, always stay in profile. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, when it comes to the descent, it will do, it's similar to the A320 in that it won't automatically descend. Okay. Um, You'll, have, you'll see a, a top of descent uh, indication on the ND, but you have to tell it to descend when you hit uh, your top of descent. Point. Right. It's not like the Boeing that will do it for you. Right. Uh, I, can't, I don't know what our transition altitude was. You, you don't put that in anywhere, do you? Or 
until we did win, I've just not as far as I'm aware now. So we're well above it. Is there a is there a standard button? Or do you have to dial it? If in? you um, click on the uh, your primary altimeter, if you just click on the, the knob. Like you ha you'll have an arrow down, uh, the other knob. Oh yeah, right arrow down. Yeah. And it should just ah, stand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Um Will I make A310 flows? Put them on? Harry, Harry has already made a start. I don't know if they'll go on the website. I imagine. I hope so. Yeah. So that's what we're using today. Another they are thing that's yeah. worth mentioning is what Tom has just said in the chat. Um, the alt cool. selector, if you're moving it by default, goes in hundreds and you'll give yourself carpal tunnel. If you um, hold, we, oh, you know, move yeah. the mouse over it so you've got the up arrow, hold yeah. it down and then scroll into thousands. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Okay, so we're well above 10,000. Flaps are up, gears neutral, and then after takeoff, check this. Will this let me drag it yet? Yeah. No. Alright, uh, after takeoff, check this. Simon. These can come off, landing lights, I presume, as can the seatbelt signs. There. Right. There we go. Have a wing view. Have a wing view for your troubles. That is also good to know. Yes, thank you, Simon. You don't need to hold down, just click once to pull and change units. Yes, okay. I think I, I yeah, I couldn't remember which was to pull and which was to push. Uh, that's why I did my time. Blimey, that's speed. Check the IFE screens. I shall. I, had, I saw these on Ben's stream. That is really cool. Is really cool. You could, they're not interactive, though. Right? I think I thought before they were interactive. That's really cool. That's to give you an ETA. Why is that? Is that because we're not at cruising? You see a distance and it knows how fast you can, so I sort of assumed it would give you an Chris Peoples, hello, how are you? Very, very nice. However, Harry's flows have run out, so I'm going to have to revert from this point onwards to the manual you sent me, Sam, I think. Which does have flows, doesn't it? It does. It's all it's all laid out there in, in, in detail, and it's worth noting that the MSFS A310 does come with the same document. Right, good. I just haven't found it yet. I haven't looked for it to be. to packages official it's in the uh, the Microsoft aircraft a310 300 in the resources folder the folder in there called documentation and you've got the a310 manual there cool I'm going to find it myself just in case there are any slight differences uh, Microsoft aircraft a310 300 resources documentation oh, yes terrific Probably because not at cruise, getting an ETA on my previous. Okay. Should be able to watch YouTube on the. Yeah, you should. You should. That's the future. You're going to have to go now. M degree, no worries. Nice to see you. Thanks for, thanks for coming. Away. Yeah, have a good rest of your Saturday, boss. Uh, how do I increase the range? Oh, it's here. Got it. Yeah. It's also when there's someone here, you just feel like there's no point trying to do anything. <laughs> and we could have a fiddle with the lights. Get, get more of that, more of that. Oh, it's lovely. 
is in my imagination. Really nice. You were going to do Ponte Delgado to Boston, but it's 5 hours 39 airtime, only 4 hours 19 going the other way to Delgado. We have to put it to democracy to choose a longer haul. Yes, we will put it to democracy. We will. Although, although, this is the first of two legs. Uh, this is the first of two legs that this error did. So it went from... Uh, uh, zero to Rome, Rome to Dubai. So I think next week sometime over on Twitch, uh, we'll probably do the... Uh, second leg down to Dubai so that'll be a medium haul and then after that when we hit probably when we hit 2,000 uh, followers on Twitch which we are only if I remember rightly 13 away from so if anyone here is enjoying the stream doesn't follow me on Twitch and would like to you could potentially tip me over that 2,000 threshold and then we'll do a proper one I am loving it so far I'm really 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 it. reminder one six right was active for landing but you also said it had a broken ILS, boss. You also said it had a broken ILS. Which, uh, and, and considering it, they were using 1.6 left when I started this flight. I think I might just use that one. You know what I mean? That wouldn't upset anyone too much. Sam, would that upset you too much? Not at all. No. Yeah, also the most recent flight landed one six left was that was the uh, Itaro one six one six from Bari. So yeah, I'm fairly happy with that. But in ten k ten thousand pounds of fuel so far, still about eighty nautical miles till top of descent. Didn't you have like eleven? I was in kilograms though, boss, not pounds. So I think like they surely have an RMP approach, don't they? Oh, that's true. Maybe they do have an RMP. Approach. But we're going to do the ILS one six left. OMG, my, oh my god, my immersion in the words of a famous streamer in flight simulator. <laughs> yes, boss. Yes, that's exact. I chose not to say it when you were talking about landing 1-6 right, even when IRL, they're landing 1-6 left. I did, I did, um, I did, I just decided not to say it. Ten minutes ago, latest arrival, 1-6 left, boss, and you're ruining my immersion with all this talk of 1-6 right, but I thought I'd keep it to myself. So nice. <laughs> Have you tried playing Flight Simulator 1 inside the sim on the Garmin 1000 screen? No, is that a real thing? No way. I will definitely have to do that again. You can activate it by pulling the ELT switch in the DA62. That is very, very much uh, Inception. Uh, speaking of that, can the A310 fly an RNP approach in coupled El Navina? Sam, can the A310 fly an RNP approach in coupled El Navina? Oh, he's, he's muted. Maybe he's gone for a week. No, oh, no I there. was just talking to myself like the idiot that I am. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> there are, it is possible to do non-precision approaches in profile mode in the A310, but I don't think it's fully RMP capable, so I may be able to correct me on that there. Yeah. I would have maybe thought so. I don't know. Not me. Not me. The answer you were looking for is no. Will, go to bed, man! Should, please tell me you've had a sleep since you did your 14 hour stream. <laughs> is this true? Is this true? Or are you just delirious with tiredness and making things up? <laughs> uh, yes, FS1 to 4 are in the sim as an Easter egg. Surely a stream on it. Just got to deal with the ELT alarm going off all the time. Yeah. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. I like the fact that it tells you when you are within the engine ice, which we are now. Well, we still are, are we? Down to minus 40. Down to minus 40, isn't it? But there's no platform, so we can probably turn our engine and turn off. You had a snooze, don't worry. Oh, good, 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 good. Boss, you need to fly the A310 now. It's POG. It's POG. AF. Yeah, world flight's over. Yeah. Uh, we're about to find out because I'm doing an RMP approach for 27 at San Diego. Oh, let us know. Let us know how you do, boss.
Uh, oh, good. Am I understanding that correctly? Oh, so basically, you can use it as an aid, but in terms of minima, you would only fall back to L nav. To, you would fall back to L nav only minima. I think so. I think so. I think that's what I've surmised from the various things people have said, but I'm, I'm not surmised. So. Ben will turn up at some point and answer all these tricky questions, which I really shouldn't be. Really I don't know, he might, he might still be holding his bed. But do you know the thing that puts me off doing world flight? The sheer volume of aircraft. I just don't... You know, all that taxiing on the grass and aircraft jammed in hither and thither and people being idiots. I don't, it doesn't appeal until such time as we manage to hire a fixed base simulator and actually do it as a, as a team. And then I will, uh, I will accept the emotion <laughs> the general chaos. Did anyone else here do any of the world things? I think I'd rather shoot myself. There we are. There we are. Sam telling it how it is. <laughs> I watched, I dropped in to Will's stream when he was at one of the airports in Greenland. Everything that I saw there convinced me that I don't want to go within a thousand or two thousand Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Will's streams have put me off as well. <laughs> <laughs> you can read into what I said as much as you want, but I, I make no comments on the quality <laughs> of Will's streaming, controlling, or flying. <laughs> Lilo, hello. Any news about the weather radar after the update 11? Um, no. Was there supposed to be? Were we supposed to have a, a better weather radar? I thought that was something they made a start of in the last sim update. But we got a 2D weather radar, which is which is in use in this plane, I think. I haven't seen much. I mean, on, I'm on Turkey. Perhaps if we change it to weather for the way down, we might see something. I'm not sure. But yeah, so, so the last I heard about MSFS weather radars is that Asobo had not done enough for developers to make a proper working 3D weather radar. And they instead had some sort of 2D traffic data. Um, see this, yeah, I've just turned it to weather and all we've got is sort of solid everything. So I think it's safe to say that we do not have Oh, oh no, I did just move it all the way to test, did I? Is that what happened? I don't know what's... I can't see. No, so that's on test and that's not doing anything. If I turn it to weather, I get this, which is not very useful. No weather, but very bright. <laughs> yeah. So let's set it to turbulence, because we liked that. That was fine, and it probably won't show us anything that we won't either. Um... <laughs> No, Will, not really. It's not your streams at all. I just, I got a sense of what it was like from your streams. It was well taken. My comment, the way it wasn't supposed to be taken. Yes, yes, was... but I think it's my fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will clarify. I, literally what I said, it was watching what was happening to other people and one of the London area controllers was controlling the airport and... Um, he was the same guy who actually covered the sector that Wojtek and I flew in Cross the Pond. And oh, yeah. in Cross the Pond, he was just getting steadily more and more sarcastic as the day went on because no one was listening yeah. to him. And like the five minutes of Will's stream I watched, he was he was ready for a beer or ten. I'll put it that way. Right, OK. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's amazing. Honestly, I've made some superb memories over the last week. The whole thing is not for immersion. It's for the ATC and the means. Yes, I do get the appeal. I absolutely do. I can see why you love it. I just don't think I would. I just don't think I've got the mindset to, uh, to not. I mean, even you got frustrated with some of the other pilots, well. and I think I've got less patience. Than I don't know. I don't know. Never say no. As I say, you find us a fixed base sim, I will be there. <laughs> uh, I it, sorry, I've missed bits. Uh, Daz, uh, you curious why I chose Emirates? It was a real world route previously, yes. So I spent more time humming and ahhing about what I wanted my first flight to be than I have doing the actual first flight, including the two and a half hour setup. Um, and I picked this one because I had limited time today, but I have more time in the coming weeks. 
and it's a two-legger. So this first leg takes us from Zurich to where are we going? Rome. And then the second leg is from Rome to Dubai, so a slightly longer haul for us to continue it onwards next week. And I thought, well, yeah, that suits me quite nicely. And yes, it was, it was a real as well. According to the devs, the weather radar is fully operational, but apparently the buttons are a bit mixed up. You're not turning it to WX, i.e. it doesn't allow you to. Oh, does it go straight past it? No, there's four clicks. So we've got map, turb, WX, and test. And in WX, it gives me this. So what should I turn it to? Should I turn it to test then? Is it sort of, is the test and the WX messed up? They're stuck. Don't know. Voite what Voitex saying and what Tom's saying, they do not quite they do not quite line up. Um, but yeah. I did, however, heat of the moment. The more I look back, I should leave the comments there and take them no further. Yeah, maybe, but it's easier said than done. Easier said than done. Aditya, wow, nice to see you. It's been a long time. I just haven't been doing YouTube streaming. I've been focusing on Twitter. And going forward, I think I'll try and do a bit more YouTube. And maybe not a bit less. I can't bring myself to do less Twitch because I'm so nearly at 2,000. But maybe once I hit 2,000, I'll kind of focus over here a bit. Get my alerts sorted. Maybe even turn the camera on. Maybe. Don't know. Are you cracking open a cold one, Sam? So. Maybe. <laughs> Weather doesn't line up, so you're not activating. I mean, okay, it looked like it did, but I'll tell you. Later. Um, yeah, 15k. I know, I know, I know. And my YouTube channel growth has slowed down because I haven't been doing videos, and that's okay. But I miss, I miss the days of climbing through the sun. YouTube's a good platform. Might be the future of streaming. Who's, who's to say? You've been really burnt out on aviation for a while, just got your interest there. Oh, good. I mean, I've had years away from flight simming. So yeah, you're not alone, boss. Everyone needs a break sometimes. Um, it's a short flight, isn't it? I guess we perhaps start thinking a little bit about setting up the arrival. Um, let's see what the manual says. Descent preparation. ECAM memo, check. Weather and landing information, obtain. Landing elevation, set. Right, let's have a look at the uh, meta for, what is it, L-I- R-F. R-F, thank you. All met sat. It is a lot of cloud cover, I know, it's grim. Future of streaming SMH. No, boss, it might be. Because Twitch is being very, very cheeky with ads and revenue share and all this sort of thing. I have to say, I think Twitch is better, but I also think Twitch is slightly more evil. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube only take a third of your money, Twitch take half of your money, unless you're a partner. But people give you more money on Twitch, so it's worth it. But if YouTube up their game just a little bit, I think they might tip the balance in their favour. Uh, we're not really coming in for a landing already, no. We've still got all of this to go. So, yeah, about another 200 miles, I think. But because it's a new plane, and because I don't really know what I'm doing, I, I just, we may as well, we may as well be prepared, eh? So, wind is 0 to 0 at 6. Cav OK, awesome. Temperature 17, QNH 1023. done that. FMS program. Now this is something I might need some more details on, Sam. Ooh, who's this? Tom! Thank you, boss, very, very much. That must be a renewal, right? Uh, you're not far off, you two years. 20 months of gold. 20 months of gold. 
Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, Alex, I don't know how to turn it down. <laughs> I don't know how to turn it down. And I don't know why my old alerts are back rather than my new alerts. Something has gone awry. But at some point, I'll sit down and work it the hell out. A310 is the third most flown aircraft on Batsu. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. 747-800 is a freaking Category E aircraft. The threshold speed is 166 or higher. That is crazy. That is crazy. Is this something you're learning IR? Hang on, didn't you have an exam coming up to us? Have you done it? Did it go well? Um, yeah, sorry, Sam. I, this is, uh, yeah. So, uh, is this all of the FMS setup we need to do? Yes. So, uh, A310 is a bit clever. It figures out its own V speeds. Um, what we want to do mm -hmm. is go to the TO APR page. Yeah. Um, you've, we've already entered the arrival and approach before we took off of memory service, yes, the yeah. star and runway. Cool. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're just looking at the speeds that are on the TO APR page and ensuring that they make sense. A tower weight of V approach speed of 132 is correct. Um, I like to put in a little bit of extra margin. I'll probably be, at least for me, sorry, my V approach speed is 132. I'll probably okay. do it at about 135. So um, do, you, do you not put that in the wind correction box? The wind no. correction box? There's a wind correction field above where it says V approach. Um, ah, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just going through the actual, the expanded flows list at the moment just to show okay. that everything makes sense. Under check speeds, that's what I'm doing. I'm just mm. ensuring that that all makes sense. Uh, above wind correction, you can see the, you can basically choose the config you want uh, for yeah. landing. So it's um, either 20, 20 or 30, 40. Yeah, so depending on the length of the runway, you could do 20, uh, 20, 20 if you want. 30, 40 is usually what I use. Is that more standard, would you say? Is that more usual? Yeah, um, this isn't the, like the Boeings where they offer you flaps 40, but you tell you never to use them. You can mm. you can land at thirty forty, and particularly for some of the air airports that this aeroplane used to fly into, you'd need thirty forty to stop in time. All right, let's do thirty forty. That's already selected, of course. Um, it's Phil that flies twenty twenty one. It is. It's retro Phil that flies. For exam, it was over, and you managed to get a good score too. Oh, good. I'm pleased. After that, it's been so long to be back here. Oh, thank you. That'll be soothing. It is my aim. It is one of my aims. <laughs> okay, and we put in the MDA, I presume? Yep. Oh my god, boss, the x ray's not for Cat 1. Or I've got the wrong chart. Could have the wrong chart. Yeah, I've got the wrong chart. I'm looking at the ILS x ray, one, six left, and I've got yeah. one, two, and three. Oh, I've got separate charts. I've got one six left, and then there's a separate category two and three chart. It's weird. Anyway, whatever. Two one four is the MDA. No, because Zulu doesn't follow one from the arrival we're doing. This. Is A three twenty cat one only? Sam, is A three ten? Sorry, A three ten. Is it cat one only? I can't answer that question. I'm not sure. What next? Uh, so Where are you next, getting this from? What am I getting what from, sorry? All of this, uh, you, you said you're looking at the extended flows. Yes, so in the A310 MSFS manual, um, there's three sections. One is just like the basic checklists and the flows with no explanation. As you yes. scroll down, it starts expanding the flows out into actually what you're looking for is this and you should be doing this. Oh yes, I see. Ah, cool. So where I am, if you've got the A310 MSFS manual open mm -hmm. on page 50. 50, okay. Yeah. I'm there now. Okay. Enter descent wind on descent forecast page. Yeah, so if you click on mode, it goes into what's effectively um, the VNAV page from other aircraft we're familiar with. So we then click on descent forecast. Right. 
and then we'd enter our descent winds here. Oh my god. So we have to look at the sim brief plan. Mm -hmm. Now you don't, I depending on how realistic you want to be, you don't necessarily need to do this. But... We've got time. I want to be yeah. realistic. Let's do it. I've never done this. I don't actually know. So would you enter them at the top of descent? Um, the general logic that I follow um, is effectively like 30,000, 20,000 and 10,000. Um, you know, just you want a, a spread of them throughout your, your descent profile. I don't know how, because obviously with the PMDG 737 you can get that information automatically generated from you in SimBrief and import it. I can't remember the logic that the PMDG uses. but. Um, I think you, I, I, well, certainly what Seb says was that they use 310, 200, 100, and I've got those under the descent section. Um, nice, plug them yeah, in. So, so I use them. It doesn't give me 300, I guess it's standard for some reason. 200, 039, and 037. And 100. Zero four zero and zero two. Oh, and we've got a field for the airport itself. I just got the meta for that. So that is going to be zero three zero six. Oh, format error. Now give me a break. I'm doing my best here. <laughs> I'm glad we started this early. No regrets. <laughs> my level one hundred slash zero four zero slash zero two one and yes zero three zero six connection again okay Check modify thrust reduction altitude and acceleration altitude. Don't go over now. We're not going around. Uh, modify secondary flight plan as necessary. Nah. Decision height should be set only for precision approaches. For approaches using MDA, decision height should be set to minus five and deselected. How do I deselect it? Is that one? You just oh. don't have it turned on. Right. So how do we set a decision altitude then? So click on DH. Yeah. And then just use the set knob on the right hand side to set it to what it needs to be. Oh, but that's decision high. How do I do decision altitude for a, for a cat one approach? MDA. Ah, we did it on the we did it on the approach page. That's what we yes. did. Did it. Yep, good. On a normal runway length, low is recommended for the auto brakes. Okay, I can remember where the auto brakes are. Sure, there they are. Uh, mid should be used in short or contaminated runways. On very long runways where little braking is needed, auto brake is unnecessary. If uncertain, use EFB Luddock Perf to calculate. Should we use EFB Luddock Perf? Thank Do you, Do we us. have Luddock Perf pages here? Aditya, nice to see you again, and uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for thank you for stopping by. Good luck with your uh, studying. Uh, do we have the? Difference? No. I thought that was an X plane A three ten thing. It did have a, a landing performance page there. I don't know if this one does. Let's see how you would get to it. No. Trolls is confirming it can't do landing performance calculations. I didn't think it could oh, right. okay. because okay. the plane kind of calculates what you need to know anyway. Hmm. Except for the auto brake. But we'll just yeah. use low. No, we'll be fine. If landing performance is perhaps set to 2020, it's not. We can ignore that. Approach briefing under FMS pages. Use FMS pages and ND as a guide for briefing. Should cover weather. Should cover weather. Okay, let's do a briefing, shall we? I'll brief you, sir. Okay. Briefly. 
Uh, weather. So the minima are uh, 214 feet. Uh, wind is uh, <coughs> zero three zero at six knots. Not expecting any cloud. Should be a lovely easy uh, approach. Um, transition level will be as as advised by ATC. Uh, but seeing as we're not using ATC for the purposes of this flight, we're going to use flight level seven zero. Remind me, please, to switch over. Yeah. Thank you. And our MSA uh, is going to be 5,800 feet. Um, nav aids, we should tune them, shouldn't we? One, I take it you have to tune them by hand, do you, on this? It tunes them automatically. I don't know if you've been noticing this as we've been flying, but um, if you're on the progress page down the bottom, Progress. Yes. Uh, right at the bottom, on both left and right, you can see that the aircraft is automatically tuning nav aids we fly over along our Oh range. yes, yeah. And it'll in do terms, the same with the ILS. Uh, the ILS we need to tune ourselves. So in the middle of what you're looking at right now, you've got uh, the center set of knobs are the ILS frequency and course selectors. Those you have to program yourself. Okay, right. Which for us on this approach is a frequency of 108.1. Thank you. And a course of 159. Good. Mm, flight plan page, star approach, transition, and mystery approach. Right, so I tell you, I'll brief that. So we are going to be flying the Zidil 3 Bravo arrival for the ILS approach to runway 16 left. With the examer transition. For the missed approach, I've already said we're not doing a missed approach, so it doesn't really matter. But if, if the worst should happen, we'll climb straight ahead on a heading of 159 uh, to reach 7.60 ME from the ILS at 2,000 feet. We'll then turn right onto a heading of 185, 185 to join radial 159 from Oscar Sierra Tango to 19 DME, Oscar Sierra Tango, and hold. Is that clear? That is perfectly clear. Thank you, thank you. Um, Approach page. So we're going to be uh, uh, in. It's quite good this actually to get me used to where everything is. We're going to be doing a thirty forty uh, landing with a V approach of one three six. That's taking into account five knots of wind correction, and our MDA is two one four feet AMSL. The runway is going to be dry. It's going to be lit, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be big. <laughs> So we're landing on a runway, yeah? That's good. <laughs> yeah. Glad? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, let me tell you the dimensions. Unfortunately, I don't have the chart to hand. Uh, but I'll get it up right now. Here we are. Oh, it's going to be so big. Yeah, it's going to be 3,902 <laughs> metres long. Again, so many jokes, <laughs> so little time. <laughs> good evening, Dr. Magic. Welcome. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how wide it's going to be. Is that something that, that bothers you or not, not so much as the length? Not particularly. No, okay, fine. So we've given you, um, I've given you a one-dimensional overview, that's the main Yeah. We're going to be uh, using, uh, well, we're going to be arming the spoilers. We're going to be using idle reverse and auto brake low. And the go-around procedure will be, uh, well, I've described it really, haven't I? I have described it. I've described the missed approach. So go around procedure, I'll push the throttles forward and uh, I'll call for some uh, uh, gear up and flap reduction. But you're not here to do it, so I'll just do it all myself. Checked. <laughs> Good. Um, for profile descent, well, we're not there yet, are we? Yep. It's worth noting, looking at this approach, yep. that the top of descent appears quite late, but that's because it's expecting us to fly that full S turn that's in the star. When I've flown yeah. into Fiumicino on VATSIM, depending on how busy it is, they've often skipped that. 
mm. and got me going pretty much straight to the the final approach fix. So, should we do that, or should we fly it all? Um, it's up to you, really. If you want to, let's fly it all. I'm curious to ha see how it does with those S turns. I think. Yes, runway will be lit and big. <laughs> One thing to mention before we start descending is the VNAV in the A310 is not perfect. If you're expecting it to hit every constraint on the button, yes, you may be a bit disappointed. It can do it, but you need to ensure that you're monitoring the aircraft's speed. Okay. Its speed control in the descent can be a bit squirrely, so don't be afraid to throw the speed brakes out if you need to slow it down. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, does anyone know which binds work for reverse thrust? The default ones that I use for the A320 and 737 don't work with the A310. They do for me. They do for me. The ones I use for the 737. Let me just I'll pop into the settings and have a quick look for you, boss, because because Chad, um, <laughs> bear with me. Uh, so I yes, I've got them bound to the throttle to decrease. This is for the uh, Honeycomb Bravo. So I push them back beyond idle. And basically, it only gives me the option of, of full reverse, but that's okay. Uh, so yeah, throttle to decrease works for me. And and the same throttle one. I don't know why that's not showing. They definitely work together. If no other traffic are direct to the transition waypoint is normal at LARF, as far as I remember. Need you to Suvok the 16 right. Yeah, but uh, who who on earth would land 16 right when 16 left is in this place? You know what I mean? It's madness. Absolutely. Famous frozen in sky, emotional immersion wet. Treat you when? Listen. Once in a while, once in a while, you have to break break immersion in order to be a good citizen. Yeah. You don't get to be the world's premier flight sim influencer. By refusing to help people out time to time. <laughs> Does this thing have weather radar? Allegedly, Danny. Allegedly. But it's not... I, I don't know. If I turn it to WX, it just shows me like a test screen. So I, I, I'm not sure. I think someone said they were aware of it. And it certainly won't be a full working weather radar because MSFS doesn't allow it yet. So it'll be a 2D type jobby, which is probably... Hooray! Good news for you, and I hope, I hope to God it works now you've been through all that. Now it's a bit too dark now, isn't it? Never mind, it was always going to be dark by the time you arrived. Performance is good for me, so far. talking for a little bit. It was, uh, it's been intense. Sam, you can entertain. <laughs> that doesn't mean my work is finished. I'm yet to install all the lab data aircraft. Yeah, just done a full reinstall myself. Deal for you. ahead. Wise. First thing you kind of want to think about is top of descent. Um, so yes. as we get closer, 
obviously drop the alt select to the platform altitude. Yeah. Um, about 10 to 5 nautical miles away, what you could do is you could pull the knob and it'll arm profile descent mode for you. So that when you overfly the um, top of descent, it'll then start descending. Okay. That's it cleverer won't... than the A320. I've just realised I could be streaming at 1440p on YouTube, couldn't I? Look at Fly's HD. logo light on but I imagine it doesn't work well. The wing lights on. There we go, now we can see. It might have saved your settings in the cloud tree I think, mind it. I didn't have to redo that. I don't know where that music was coming from. Oh, it's coming from my Twitch page. I was just going to have a look to see if uh, you people have all followed me at twitch.tv flies, and I am in fact over 2,000 followers. Remains to be seen. Uh, stream manager. No, you haven't. You haven't, have you? Sad times. Sad times. <laughs> I took... I'll tell you who has, who is an absolute legend. Chronic TV has. Hello, 4SWS, welcome. But that is it. So yeah, if, the, if those of you who are watching are enjoying the stream, would like to see more, uh, do go and drop me a follow over at twitch.tv slash film. It would mean a lot to me. <laughs> no, thank you. It's a kind offer, boss. It's a kind offer. But you could, if you wanted, invite some of those bots back, I guess. <laughs> right, so we're about 20 out from our top of descent now, I think. Should tell us somewhere down here, right? Yeah, I mean, either, I believe, comes up a little TD in the flight plan, and then quite separately, obviously, in the ND, you have, um, you'll have the little, the little arrow. Yes, I see the little arrow. No, I don't think they did, actually. You've already followed me on Twitch. Thank you, Forrest. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. 
did not capture the ILSV for 160. Ooh. That's not so good, boss. But we could buy some as those enterprise spammers suggest. Yes. Do you reckon they do like packages of 12? I think I could I think that might be quite cheap just buying 12. <laughs> Uh, I don't want it to not capture the ILS. I'm a little bit ahead of you, I'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, okay. So we've got a speed constraint of 250 knots at Gopal. Which I take it it will obey. So let's set a lower altitude then. And, and, and we should be able to set our platform altitude, should we? Yes, and then it should respect any altitude restrictions on the way down. I will put one caveat in front of you now. Yeah. Um, certainly none of the en-route waypoints here have hard constraints. The first hard constraint is actually Exama, which is the... Uh, one of the transition... It was the one of the initial approach fixes, which is a hard limb altitude of 4,000, so... Okay, all right. We'll but that's what the top of the set is basing its descent profile on, is that first hard constraint at Exama. Okay. Okay. Now, I believe I had can pull this to turn it to 500, to increments of 100, right? Yeah, so as Tom was saying, uh, when you've got the up arrow, you should be able to push it once and then scroll and it'll do it in increments of 1,000. Yeah, that's lovely. Thank you. I was in thousands and pushing it once, as I said, maybe. Hundreds, right? Uh, I do remember you, Forrest. Yes, I do. I don't remember your name on Discord, but I do remember you. Uh, mine was a bit slow in capturing the glide slope, but it did capture. Good. So that's all we need to do then, right? We just wait for it to hit that top of descent arrow, and it will start Just before down. the top of descent arrow, maybe um, five nautical miles or so, just pull the knob, and that should arm profile descent mode. Pull it. Which and is down oh, arrow? Uh, yes. Oh yeah, and it's done it. Very well. Thank you. It's that pushing and pulling I'm going to have to get used to. Uh, Similar-ish to what you see in the A320. Yeah, but Actually, in the A320... No, not, you... because in the A320, don't you push the knob to arm managed? Yeah. yeah. And here you push the knob to change to hundreds or thousands. Yeah. It has done our 250-knot uh, limit, I think. That's good. The A310 is normally slow. It's not very... We're doing Mac Decimal 8 one of them. Which is faster than I'd go in, a, in an A320. It's flashing. P-Descent is flashing. Means it's armed. Means it's armed. Okay, good, good. Just to ensure that uh, we've not crossed the top of descent point yet. We are doing it now. Yep, yeah, there, there we go. Yes, we've got a pink B dev diamond. Awesome. Aerodynamic simulation. Aren't aerodynamics the people who are building the KC10? I don't know, they doesn't ring a bell to be honest with you. Why, where did you see that? It's the chap who's talking about the A310 is normally slow in your channel. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean slow as in responding? Yes, I think it is a bit slow. This is literally my first flight in it, though, so I'm not really, uh, not really an expert. Um, hence having Sam in the chat to educate me because he's flown it uh, a lot in uh, explaining. Just a slight footnote, I'm not an expert either. <laughs> So it's not, I'm going to use a bit of a uh, speed brake. Yeah, um, what you should see happen soon-ish is the profile mode will automatically set to the next speed, which for me was 220 knots. In the descent, you may need to pull the speed brakes and ride them a little bit just to ensure the aircraft holds that speed. But um, we should be going 250. Yeah, for now you should. I'm, I'm talking about when when you make that turn that's coming up. Yeah. Okay. So so this is fairly standard, though, is it? That you you, you would have to pull the speed brake to get it slowed down to. Yeah. As I said, the VNAV in the A310 is far from 
perfect. It's not as good at managing its airspeed in the descent as aircraft like the A320 or the A340 would. Right, okay. I also noticed that it's uh, it was throttling up even though I wanted to slow down. Which is not ideal. If you see at the moment where the green dash is. Yeah. Sorry, the blue dash on the speed tape on the right hand side. That's the, yeah. the speed it currently wants to try and maintain. When it says retard, do I have to retard the throttle levers? No. Is the, the auto throttle is fully automatic. You can just leave the throttle levers doing what they are. So it's ignoring the constraints then, basically, isn't it? Completely. It wants to do 290. Yeah, it should have pulled you back to 250 by now. Or tried. Just check your uh, flight pan page. Uh, check the, the topmost waypoint. Hasn't got it. Got pole. Wait, RF 444 is where we're headed. Yeah, so Ravox is your next waypoint. It still wants to try and be at Mac Decimal 82 there. Why? not applied correctly. Mine... Yours was right? Yeah. Less drag. And you haven't got any drag here. <laughs> so how do I tell it then 220? You should... Let me just check this on my side. If you select the weight with the right hand set of LSKs, select the waypoint you want, you can put a speed restriction on there. Not allowed. Or I just do 220 and then LSK. No, not allowed. No, click oh, it. Yeah, just I click the LSK. No. I think I get the wrong one. Yeah, speed 220. So go to waypoint Ravox, which I believe yeah. is the next one you're coming to. Yeah. You should be able to put a hard speed restriction in there. I have. have 250 under the speed section. I've put 220. Okay. So, yeah, so it either missed the one at Gopol or thought it no longer applied. I think it missed it. So now we're going to need more drag to get down. You know, it's quite nice not flying on that. Does it give any indication like the A320 does of when we're going to intercept our V path? If we're above it. I do not believe so. Actually, yes, it does. You'll see a vertical deviation indicator come up on the right hand side of the PFD. Yes. Once you once you get close enough, what you want to do is you want to drop the nav mode down to ILS. You don't need to worry about that yet. But... Okay. Okay, so it's now decided we want to be at 230, which we are, so that's good, well, more or less, so that's good. With full speed brakes extended. <laughs> the rear facing wingtip lights are infinitely brighter than the taxi lights. Oh, really? <laughs> that's helpful. No light in the. So as well as following me at uh, over at twitch.tv slash if you would like to support the channel, you can make a donation if you want to. Uh, but that command doesn't work. Uh, I'll just post it. Just, just in case. Just in case. That's the best way. If you want to. That's ah, it did work. Ooh, that's wrong though, isn't it? God's sake. I need to sort out my commands. <laughs> yeah, use the link that I posted, not the one that the uh, streamer has posted. Oh, 
I feel we're very, very, very high. I have that feeling as well. For you or for me or for both of us? I was too high. I just... Um, I think the aircraft's profile mode would have got me down to intercept the glide slope, but it was doing it far too late for my taste. Right. So I dialed in a little bit of extra vertical speed just to ensure I got down quick enough. Okay. Well, I'm going to see how it does. Oh, we're now in danger of stalling. I think there's just been a weather change. That's oh, we're climbing. We're climbing. God only knows. So we're now descending again. You need to head to bed. We'll have to work out where the ILS didn't work for you. Yeah, I think we're all going to have to do some uh, some analysis of what the hell's gone wrong because this is not working at all. Speeding me up. We're still in profile descent. It says thrust, thrust L. Is that because... What does thrust, it mean, thrust L? Thrust L. Yeah, it just doesn't want to descend and it wants to speed up. Right. Let me just land for one second. Okay. I think what I'll do is just go into heading and select and just extend this down. Because it's broken! Speed select. I don't know why thrust L is, is flashing. Yeah, but mine isn't it's just not descending for it's just not working. Quite Now we're about to be overspeeding. Oh, it's thrust lock. Okay. Now, how do you get it out of that? Uh, for now, I just take the auto throttle out. Yeah. And just pull the engines back to about maybe 60%. Can I not just go idle? If you want to. Sorry? If you want to. Yeah, because I'm at 20,000 feet. That's really disappointing. That's really disappointing. It's going well. I'm fairly certain that had something to do with how the aircraft loaded the constraints into the FMS, because that decimal eight two constraint shouldn't have been there. Mm. Atlantis is in 300 Probably because I... Oh, I don't know. I don't know why that is. Might just be that I typed it in wrong, to be honest. How can we make this do a proper arrival then? Can we try it again? Um, I mean, we, we certainly could. Um, I don't want to just end this flight like, oh, it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Let's may try. be able to try re-entering the star. Star. 
ILS X ray one six left. That's the one you did, right? Uh, yes. Uh, examine tra transition. And the Zibil three Bravo. Wojtek is saying it happened to him last night as well. Oh, really? Chat right now is me when I was trying to teach Jason how to fly the CRJ. <laughs> you to set a speed um, and just leave the uh, the auto throttle in speed mode for now. Pull that out. Just so we don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Same less drag, but I don't have any flaps or spoilers out. Maybe that's just left it. So obviously you can't re-enter a star, it's a one time only thing. Unless we choose a different star. what they want. Uh, die on the way one six right. <laughs> Two twenty is a reasonable speed. This is a bug, and I couldn't get it to show the magenta line. Uh, which, mag which magenta line does he mean? I'm assuming the one that's on the ND. Okay. Right, let's stop our descent and see. Oh good, now it's lost my entire flight plan. Jesus Christ. I'm sure that uh, MD-11 you were flying yesterday hasn't come and haunted your system. <laughs> Isn't it really? I guess I can load the secondary flight plan. Maybe I can do that. It says down the bottom there activate sec, doesn't it? Is it? We might die, Mark. No, we probably won't die. I might just rage quit. <laughs> Where does it say activate sex, sorry? So if you click on the secondary flight plan button again. Yeah. Oh yeah, activate sex. Okay. Alright, so now we should be able to go direct to Rabbux, shouldn't we, if we want to. You may need to turn the aircraft towards that waypoint before it, um, it'll allow you to do the direct. Line drawn. Yeah, that's doing it. It is disappointing, isn't it? 
A rectilinear F circle to land. Yeah, could do. Could have just done that in heading mode. So maybe this is not the long haul we've all been waiting for. After. Can you imagine finding this after a eight-hour flight? It was a freebie, yeah. No, Wojtek, because I want it to work. I want to, I want to actually see whether or not it can fly an arrival. If it can't fly an arrival, then I probably won't fly it again. If it can, then I'll give it another chance. And you got the LNAV to work, couldn't get it done. Okay. Probably go a wee bit faster, actually. Well, let's check our constraints, because that, we think, is what went wrong last time, isn't it? Just didn't show they all make sense versus the chart because I don't know where it got that decimal eight two from. No, I don't. So yeah, that should be two five zero knots. That looks. Oh, we don't do that. Two five zero. Two five zero. Now that's gone to Mac decimal zero. Good plan. So it won't accept a speed constraint you put in. Ah, oh, it might be because it's thinking we're at flight level 390. <sighs> Let's give it an altitude then. So we want to be at or above flight level 90 according to this thing. So let's put that in. Or 9,000 feet. I don't know why it doesn't think it's a flight level. No, won't accept a speed of 2.0 knots. Oh, it's not been good in degree. Where did you get the activate secondary flight plan button from? You press the secondary flight plan page, and then if we'd had one there, then we would have been, there was an activate secondary button. I'm sure this isn't one of those PEPCAC errors. Might be. But entering them incorrectly. Let's have a look. I mean, it's got a speed limit of 230 below flight level 100. I don't know why, but that's fine. Um, at Ravux, I can't see what else I could do other than put speed 250 at or above 9000. I don't, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Unless it's something to do with it being the speed limit. Let's try 240. Uh, you're about to suggest, suggest setting an altitude constraint. Yeah, that's what I've done. Uh, what's happened is... Well, what, how would I describe what's happened? Um, the first thing that happened was it didn't follow... It did follow our VNAV path approximately, but it had a constraint of Mach decimal 82 for one of the waypoints that should have been 250 knots or 230 knots. So that's the first thing that went wrong. Um, then... It decided to climb. I don't know why it decided to, to climb. There were no constraints. Oh no, we have got some constraints here. Flight level 252. And yet I can't remove that because it doesn't actually have it here. You see it? Ligbu. This is going to be at flight level 252. Yes, it did, Sean. Yeah, it does. Unlike the A320, it does, it does select the line automatically. Hello, Oscar. 
So we can't remove the we can't remove the constraint for flight level two five two at Big Blue. No way of doing that. Although that does just look like it's, it's perhaps not a hard constraint, but just what it thinks it's going to be at based on a descent flight probe while cruising at flight level three point zero. So perhaps we can change that. Let's change our our uh, altitude to what we're doing now, which is flight level one three zero. I don't know. I'm just messing around and hoping I can make this work. It's it's definitely not. That's better. It should still let me put a constraint. Maybe not. Maybe it, that was unachievable. Blimey, that's a long one, Oscar. I hope your arrival goes better than mine has. Thank you, MDG. Yeah, this is not going well. But this looks better, right? It's got a 325 knot thing here. I don't think pseudo point not allowed, so I can't change that. So I should be able to put it back into profile. Maybe it'll let you, let you can change this, change which one? So it's accelerating, which is fine, I guess. Because that was just a random speed up. But it, it, eh. Let's just see what it does. Um, it, what, what's happened? Oh, I can't, I, uh, a lot, Oscar, <laughs> a lot. It's strange because I'm sat on the ground now with the exact same flight plan and I can change all the constraints fine. You're, you're not really? doing anything wrong in how you're doing it. I wonder if it's a case of when you've activated the star, you know, you've entered the initial waypoint for it and you can no longer edit the constraints. Maybe. Let me try editing one. Let's make this one flight level 120. Yeah, as, as uh, Daniel says, it might be possible. Yeah, that's worked. But it's allowed me to change the altitude at Zabab, whatever I just did. Um, back up. It has allowed me to do that now. I can't remember what I've done to allow that to happen. But anyway, I can now put altitude constraints. This top of descent pseudo waypoint, I don't think should affect anything. It's mental that it's decided it will be at 325, but with a bit of luck, it won't. But then Ravux, we've got a 240 knot constraint and we're doing 320. So it's not working, it's just not following any of it. Look at the glass shield. What's it telling you is the profile speed on the FMA? 300 and 20 something. 322 and a half. You've got a Jason plane, it's haunted. Yeah. So your arrival was all fine. Yeah, as I said, uh, profile spat me out maybe a little higher than I wanted to be um, on final, but mm. got me down. Obeyed, you know, my speed, it obeyed all the speed constraints, it obeyed most of the altitude, well, there were no altitude constraints, but it had right. done a pretty decent job of planning everything. It may be, as I said, the A310's VNAV is, was, is just not as good as stuff we're used to, so... But it should, Maybe but where's it, it got this speed from? It's, I don't understand. We'll see what happens when we hit our top of the set, I guess. It seems to be here. After a sunny. Yeah, between the sunny. And back up, we'll see if it... 
Yeah, it's got this. It's this, it's this 325 on the top of the sen. I can't make that go away. And that's the issue. Pseudo point not allowed. No, you can't do anything with that. Which you would expect, I guess, but you just wouldn't expect it to have a speed like that in it. Yeah, you'd expect it to ignore it if um, the constraints on either side were wildly different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I could do that, Sean, definitely, but I want to make this work, or, or at least try and understand why it isn't working. What do I do to allow it to descend again? I pull it, don't I? Yes. Is that down arrow? Mm -hmm. And that says P descent. Okay, so so theoretically now it should work. And we've got our V dev showing up. But where we want to be, the only thing that's wrong at the moment is the speed. We've got an immediate descent option. And it's not. Is it descend? Yeah, it just descend. And it's bringing the speed back. Right, let's give it some speed break now. Because we want to be much, much slower. Yeah, I'm sure it is, Tom. It's, it's just so frustrating. It's like every new plane that comes out either doesn't work or doesn't work for me, you know? Now it's saying we're much too low, which I struggle to believe, seeing as I've told it we want to be empty. No, maybe that makes sense, actually. Maybe that makes sense. It just, it just appeared. It just appeared on the FMC. I guess when you're approaching your top of descent, you have the option to start your descent sooner by clicking that. So it's descending me, even though I'm low. Even though I've got a hard constraint in the flight of wheel one two zero on its way. Any ideas? We force it to level off at eleven thousand and see if it can start again better. It'll always descend with at least a thousand foot. Yes, but we are hitting it this way, because I put a constraint in. Tell you what, let's tell it again at RF444 we want to be at 11,000. See, now it shouldn't be saying with low profile, because I've just told it we want to be at 11,000, right? And we'll reset to 2,000. that again and then that should put it in armed profile descent okay let's see what it does now I guess technically we are there we didn't want to be at 11,000 until that next week Yeah, but it shouldn't descend below a constraint, is my point. Surely, surely it's not part of the aircraft's programming to ignore an element of constraint, is it? Dude, it's got full VNAV, uh, VNAV descent modeled. Alright, what else do we need to do? 
to put landing lights on, presumably. Seat belts. Nose to taxi. I'm not too worried about it. So, where's the power business? Examiner, we don't want to be at 210, we want to be at 200. Thousand feet at Burbies. Yeah, that's correct. And the speeds, I guess. I don't know where it's got those speeds from, but they seem about right. Oh, good, we're running out of fuel now. How much fuel have you got on board? Now my VDEV has disappeared. So I don't know what it's doing now. No idea. How do we clear this uh, ECAM message? Uh, just push the um, takeoff caution button once and see if that gets rid of it. Yes. Or the clear button. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we've got no V path anymore. Thanks, Tom. Hang on a second. Can you look back down at your uh, central panel? Yeah. Yeah, just where you've programmed the ILSs. Yeah. Stream's a little bit delayed for me. It's in VOR mode. Go back up to the FCP. Oh, shit. Was it user error all along? I don't know if you knocked it once or what what happened, but put it no. put, I'd put it in nav mode for the next couple of minutes, and then once we make that little turn to the right, that kink, we're going to put it in ILS mode. Okay. The second kink. Um, I believe the runway is somewhere in. Yeah, we've got one kink, and then the runway is along that that heading. Hmm. So where it says. I want six left. Oh, we don't want to be in stand. Push that. No. You're best off contacting any builds on their forums or Discord. <laughs> okay, so you can see on the right hand side of the PFD you've got a vertical deviation indicator now. Yes. So I should go into ILS now? Well, as soon as it starts making its turn, let's drop it down into ILS mode. Okay. Oh, that made me jump. Hello, Jackson. Thank you very much for your uh, renewal. Nice to see you. Okay. And now what we want to do is, on the right-hand side of the FCP, we want to push the land button. 
And is there any, do we have to activate approach mode down here or anything? No, it should do it automatically for you. In fact, I don't think there is such thing as an approach mode in the A310. Okay. Okay. I've certainly never had to activate an approach mode. Right. So we're above our vertical profile, but we're below the glide, so that's probably fine. That was a good spot. You can barely see the knob, can you? I just saw that the part of VOR was obscured. So why is that switch in that position? Yeah. Oh gosh, I should do flaps and things, right? Yeah, so I'd probably go to 1515. Or... Uh, thank you for the one pound uh, super chat, Jackson. What I would do now as well is, um, as per the wonderful Simon's fat sim instructions, I would pull the speed knob so we could select it and I'd slow us down to 180. Okay, so the aircraft won't slow itself down for us, or it will, but it's better to do it yourself. I've always done it myself. It may do it for you, but the profile mode in the A310 is a bit squirrely by design. Um, okay. Let's can, drop flaps 15 because we're getting quite a, a nose up out attitude here. Ah, uh, really, sure. Because I did go to VOR mode to try tuning a VOR, didn't I? Like, at the beginning. But I can't have been in it for that long, because we've been along the, following the nav path, right? Or does, does the nav mode work even in VOR mode? I think the nav mode works even in VOR, at least oh, if you've got it following you an FMS flight plan. Right. This is something I saw that was, that's not supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. Gear down? Yep. And what was our VRAF? Oh, I feel better now. If I've just made an error, then that's that's fine. I mean, it's not fine. It's not ideal. But it's better than <laughs> being broken, you know? Oh, it's still descending us past 2,500 feet. Why is that? Look up. Uh, I've got a delay on the stream, so I'm not sure. Oh, right, let's... Yeah, let's... It's not maintaining my speed as I pitch up. Uh, Christ. That wasn't usual error, right? It should have stopped at 2,500 feet, unless it should have stopped on the line slope. If you were in VS mode, I would have expected it to keep going down, maybe not like that. That was a very good plan. Why less flaps? Probably should have reeled in the flap when you were recovering from the dive. You know, pull in, uh, and go to maybe flaps fifteen. Oh, it went. Mm, it's pink. It's sort of, I don't know what it's doing. I've got no autopilot. But it's turning in a jagged sort of a. Oh. 
still a possibility of death, yes. Those flight directors are a problem, had the same behaviour after takeoff. Did you? Yeah. Seems to be turning sort of normally now. Is this just stutters I'm having, or is I can't tell if it's stutters or a problem with the plane? I don't know. Wallowy sometimes at slow speed. This shouldn't be as, as bumpy as it is now. No fuel, no go around, quite. Even were it not for the fuel, I tell you why I would not be going around after what we've just been through. It's landing or death. Landing or death. Well, here we are. Yeah, performances. Floor. Nice recovery. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Oh, here we are. Started fun and quickly deteriorated, eh? Yeah, and I've got no answers for you as to what yeah. went wrong. Because <laughs> I landed through all of the same procedures successfully, yeah. and you didn't do anything wrong, as far as I could see. Yeah. Blimey, I see what you mean about the taxi line. It does nothing. I didn't have my one way turn up, so I could have just turn on my way to show us some. Strobes off. Or turn at least. Uh, I should probably have a look at a chart because I have no idea where I'm going. It is a shame, Web Degree. Thanks. It was in VR since before takeoff. Really? It must have been when we were talking about it before departure. Oh. But in VR, I just forgot about it. It was a nice drive through the suburbs to reach the threshold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well, I'll give it another go. Start the APU, I guess. Yep. It's been. Assuming you've pulled in the flaps and the spoilers. I seem fine so I don't know what that sort of jerky jerky aileron jerky roll was going to happen. Uh anyway. Imagine you've been on Vatsim, at least now we know where the rules was there and why Vatsim was specifically reminded. Yes, quite. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, I guess, I guess in a simulator, you don't know what being on that VOR switch is going to do, really, do you? 
Why was I going to park? I found somewhere sensible that I need to park. Do, 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 do. 605. Oh yeah, so we keep going. Right on hotel. Left on Sierra. Not right now, Integrate. I mean, right now, I feel like I don't really want to fly again. Um, but yeah, I will. Give me a couple of days and I'll play another one. I think I really need to sit down and learn what I'm doing a little bit. Or I might just go back to the A320 and say it so much. We know that. Taxi lights are meant to light up. I would have thought the taxi lights should light up where you're going. Yeah. Where's just the angle? It's the angle I'm sitting. There's a little bit of light down there. A little bit. Maybe so, but they have been testing it for ages, right? But yeah, we don't know. If I had put that VOR switch in the, into NAV, it might have all been fine. It seems unlikely. It seems unlikely that that would have caused it to blow through. But we don't know. We just don't know. That's the reality. We know if we're not flown it properly, I can't really comment, can I? Especially as everyone else seems to be going. Go off to try and get some dinner. Might see some. Yeah, okay, to see. I would. You won't see me. Cause I'm Go out. So, yeah. See you soon. Yeah, I think Ben said they already had a, a fix in the works for some of them. Jobs, boss. <laughs> yeah. Right, so the APU should be on. Yeah, it says available. I can kill the engines. Yep. Let's see what I'm doing. Nice, give me a little bow. That's nice. Oh, and now it's good. The boarding requested. Right. Um, APU bleed on. 
fuel pumps off? I don't know, I'm guessing. Except for the two left. I'll go through the procedures for this another time. When do we just get the deboarding done? And call it a day. There we go. Welcome to Rome. Could have died, didn't. That's <laughs> uh, what more do you want from a flight, you know? Should have flown the spruce goose. Yes. I'm sure you'll be good at updates and fixes. I, I was very impressed with the way they omitted the Pico version 1 wasn't good enough. Yeah, and they got a version 3 in the world as well. Well, it was mostly good fun. It was only the last bit. That was, it's just it's the last bit that counts, isn't it? <laughs> as I said, as far as I was concerned, you did everything correctly. So thank you. And thank you ever so much for your help as well. That made it all a lot easier than it was. No worries. It was a pleasure, never a chore. Good. Thank you. I know you weren't super keen, so it <laughs> means all the more. Well, I think that was just because uh, I was introduced to this concept as you're a backup bear. So. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, why is MSFS not letting me change presets? Uh, in where? Is it in accessibility, and are you in the Phoenix? If you're in the Phoenix, they will default to the Velociraptor or the Holocopter. And uh, you have to change the individual things, you can't change the uh, overall difficulty level of the controls. I don't know if that's what you're in. That's the only thing. At the top of my head. Yes, boss, proposition, go! In controls, I don't know. Ah, oh, I would, Will, I would, but I'm going out partying tonight, unfortunately. But another time, definitely. We should give it a go and see, see what it works for you, doesn't Yeah, no, I've got to go in uh, a couple of hours. Right, well. I hope you've enjoyed watching this. I'm sorry I got a bit grumpy. I do get a bit grumpy when things go wrong. Can't help it. I like to fly plen and it be everything go well. <laughs> but you can't always have that. That's not what flight simming is. But uh, I'm not very good at disguising my frustration, unfortunately. Um, but yes, I think we'll call it a day there. Next stream is likely going to be on Monday. Uh, I don't know if it is going to... It'll be on Twitch, I'll tell you that much. Twitch.tv slash PhilbertFlies if you haven't already followed me there. Um, I will... I'm going to pop into the uh, VC, Club Philbert VC, for a little bit. If anyone wants to chat. Um, and, uh, yeah, the rest of you, thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who has re uh, re-membershiped. Renewed their membership, that's the word I'm looking for. And... Uh, Everyone who has donated and that sort of thing, very, very much appreciated. I love you all dearly. Uh, Sam, thanks again. I'll see you in the other VC shortly, I'm sure. And uh, yeah, enjoy your evenings, whatever you are up to. Uh, see you. See you on the next one. Everyone Bye, touch. everybody. Bye, everybody.